California. The Federal Communications Commission has determined the following content to be emotionally harmful. Funny things that you think funny aren't funny. Give me cocks all the time. I want cocks all over me. The Alan Cox Show kicks ass, man. Welcome. Welcome. Show me what you got. You're not going to see a lot of cocks on TV. Alan Cox from the Alan Cox Show. I don't know what it's about you, but I can't even stand your voice. I think you're the biggest asshole alive. It's going to be a great show. Let's kick it. I'll say kick it, and you'll just kick it with a tasty groove, okay? One, two, three, kick it. Kick it, come on, god damn it, could you one time kick it? What the f***? Alan Cox. Here we go, he'll ad-lib, he'll be fine. It's the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. Hey, what's going on, gang? Good afternoon. Hi there. Greetings. How you feeling? Good? Well, you smell terrific. I assume. I don't know. Oh, my name's Alan Cox. Thanks for being here. Welcome. Say hi to Bill Squire. He's right over there. Creepy hugs, everybody. Creepy, creepy hugs. Mary Santora's out. Pound Cake is back in Studio G. Afternoon, white people. Big new cake on the lake tonight. Yeah. Are you doing your stretches for that? Are you doing your calisthenics? Are you? How are you preparing? Kegels. Uh, are you doing your Kegels? I always do my Kegels, so that's not anything extra. You oh, do yeah. those during the show. I, I do those. Smart. You know, all day, every day. I wake up doing my Kegels. <laughs> but, uh, no. I mean, it's chill, and I like having guests that, you know, relax me, and Members Only Dave is one of those people. Now, do you have, <laughs> is there a protocol for being... Ushered into uh, Pound Cake Towers. You know, here at iHeart Cleveland, there's a whole, there's like an airlock out there. Well, most and of somebody like- has to have their face scanned, and then somebody yeah. has to go get them. You know, Bill's building has a doorman. I assume yours does not. Mine does not, no, but... Um, you do a lot of them remote, though, I right? was going to say, I, I've only had one in-person guest. The other ones, I, you can do an invite to a live, and then... Oh, I thought you were having people next to you on your couch. No, no, no. No, I only had one guest uh, to do that. Though. I think you should bring that, make that more of the format, well, though. I, I think that's more say, fun. You, you, so, you're, so this is a, just a Zoom thing, then? Well, it's you can invite people to your live, and it, it, it's the, the same thing. It gives the convenience of not having to travel, because that's what I ran into when I was doing the podcast, is, you know... Uh, Asking people to do a podcast is cool, but it's also free, and people sometimes travel far and wide. I've had people from all over doing a podcast, and being remote you know, allows that access, so I'm cool with that. Hmm. So this will be it's like a split screen type situation. Yep. Top and bottom. <laughs> I'm Are on, you the top or the bottom? I, I, I was envisioning side to side, but that's dealer's Instagram, choice. Instagram does it that way. I'm does on the it top. top to bottom. Guest is on the bottom. It doesn't give you any uh it doesn't let you manipulate if you want it side by side or top and bottom. I have not no. I don't think it does, but I have not tinkered with it enough. Um, so you get I, kind of a Brady Bunch vibe. Yeah, I'm more afraid that if I do that while we're live. It, it will, like, interrupt the live, and I don't want that to happen because I've had that happen a couple times where I don't know if the signal wasn't strong or Instagram was glitchy, and then it, it just hangs up. So I don't I don't like that. But Oh, I thought, I, I guess because I only poked my head in on that first one you did, and mm-hmm. it was you and one of your friends on the couch, and I guess I thought yeah. they were all like that. No, that was the only one that was on the couch, and that, oh. and that was also me testing the waters because like, I didn't know. I hadn't done a live. God, I can't remember the last time I did a live. Before last do- Thursday, no, no, I'm saying like before <laughs> I started this little oh, okay. Instagram series. Right. It's every Thursday. The short-term memory, I was going to say, it is already. He has to leave himself little notes on post-its, like Guy Pearson memento. Yeah, no. So I'm not really familiar with all the things you can do, but I think that's really cool where you can just have people join your live or you join someone else's. You can make it like a conference call. You can have several people on the live. Uh huh. So I'll. Hopefully, be testing that out in a couple of yep. weeks. Yeah, you know we should do that on the show today, Bill. I'll start an Instagram live, and then I'll invite you to it. Okay. And then you and I could talk. That'd be on Instagram, and we could do during that. the show. Let's do it. Oh, that'd be fun, wouldn't it? Let's try it. Oh, that way we wouldn't have to be in the same room, even though we would be. And all right, I wonder how it would, uh, how would that would even work. In here, <laughs> with uh, like double up. Oh, well, oh, that would I be did. like the mirror image, and then it just 
keeps repeating itself. Yeah. Oh, well, that would be, I think, a, an amazing listening and viewing experience it, for everyone involved. It's seeing you, it's seeing Bill, it's seeing you, seeing Bill, mm-hmm. seeing you, seeing Bill. Ooh, and they weird. tell two friends, and they <laughs> tell two friends, and so on and so on. Uh, so a brand new cake on the lake on Pie Day. Ooh. Uh, so uh, enjoy that. What Ooh. will the two of you talk about? You know, members only Dave, one of our uh, compatriots here at I Heart Cleveland. Do you, do you know what he's doing right now? Who? Uh, members only Dave. No. He's watching the movie Heat. Oh, what a great movie. One that's, minute at a time. Oh, right. Yeah, I think he that's mentioned right. that. So we're going to talk about that. That's almost, I love that, that. That's almost 300 minutes yeah. of... Uh, no, not three hundred minutes. It's it's, it's almost a, it's like a three, three hour, hour movie. movie yeah. So it's yeah, but one hundred eighty minutes. Yeah, one minute at a time. It's gonna take him three months to do it, basically. Yeah, that's so funny though. Yeah, God, I would get such blue balls watching Heat a minute at a time. It would just drive me. I just love that movie so much. It's top five for me. One of the only movies I've seen in the theater multiple times, and uh, I just love it. I don't think I've ever seen it. Oh, it's just fantastic. It's a good one. I think Michael Mann wrote it. Finally, wrote a se- he wrote a sequel, like a book or something. And I think now they're going to try to make a movie out of that, like a prequel, as it were. That's why you know it really comes. Uh, um, it's really brought into clear focus how much time has gone by. You know that came out right before New Year's Eve, I think, in 1995. I think that's when Heat came out. I, I remember. I think it came out in was it 95? I thought because Going I had in 96. I had just moved to uh, Kalamazoo, Michigan, for work the previous Labor Day. So okay, d- December 15th, 1995. So I had just moved to Michigan, but most of my stuff was still back in Chicago. So I had gone home for, like, Christmas vacation, whatever, you know. So I was home. A friend of mine and I went to go see Heat. She had no interest in it. Uh, But I was just, like, I was just blown away by that movie. I just love it so much. And then you see, you know, 30 years later. Next year, of course, it'll be 30 years later. And you see Al Pacino at the Oscars. (laughs) And you see De Niro doing whatever he's doing. He's in Killers of the Flower Moon. He did Bill Maher's show last week. De Niro plays Neil. These are 80-year-old men. Yes, Neil, not Neo. (laughs) Neil. 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 Yeah. And they're based on real guys. I mean, the story of Heat is based on real guys. Um, But I just love that movie so much. So, too, I think it's hilarious to do it minute by minute. Is this the first time he's ever seen it? Do you know? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I don't know okay. about that. Maybe Pound Cake can find that I, out yeah, on I the link. Ask. I, I, I mean, the yeah, uh, next year the movie will be 30 years old, but I, I just uh, I love it. And it was a big hit. Uh, you know, Michael Mann as a director, as far as I'm concerned, can do no wrong. But obviously those guys looked a lot different 30 years ago. I mean, they were in their mid-50s. Yeah. Al Pacino, you know, still had the cool hair. and Running you know. time, 170 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a long movie, but it doesn't feel like it. That's the beauty of that movie. There's so many characters, but nobody gets lost in the shuffle. You can, you can, you can always feel the thread of the plot. There's a lot going on in Heat. It really is like an epic movie. And it was a bankable movie too. Budget was sixty million, grossed uh, hundred and eighty-seven million. Yeah. And in 1995, sixty million dollars was a lot to make a movie too. Because they were, you know, you want to get... It was the only movie I think that Pacino and De Niro had done together where they had a scene together. Where they shared a scene together, They were both in Godfather 2, but Mm -hmm. I don't think they had any scenes. So it was like a big, big deal. There are certain movies that are just timeless. Like, even though they're, like, dated physically, no matter what age you are, you can always go back and watch them. Like, for me, it's like Jurassic Park. I can always watch Jurassic Park, no matter how old I am. Um, The Mummy, Sister Act 2... Like all of those films. That's quite a trio. Yeah, right. The yeah. Mummy, like, Sister like, Act like, Two, and Jurassic they're all, Park. They're all like '90s movies. Um, well, I think Mummy may be like early 2000s, but I think like Mummy was either 2000 or 99. But still, like close enough. Yeah. Um, those movies I remember, and no matter what age I am, I can always go back and watch them. Like because they still capture my interest. I still yeah. want that Jurassic Park Jeep. When we were in Vegas, they had it on display at one of the outside. You want the Jeep or the Ford Explorer? You want the Jeep? I think it's the Jeep that has the, the yellow like, one. The with the, yeah, one. I still want that. No, the the Jeep was tan because there there were the ones that were on the track that were like yellow and green and red. The, yeah. those were the Explorers. Okay, the and then Explorer. there was the gas powered Jeeps that were like the Jeep Wrangler. 
Okay, well, whatever the colorful one is. I just okay. feel like that's a flex. <laughs> like, yeah, I got my Jurassic Park, you know, <laughs> SUV. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's great until you have to protect yourself from a T-Rex. A bright then yellow. Then it's not going to hold up. Yeah, right. Then it's going to see you. Well, as long as you don't move, it won't see right, you, right? But I mean, it the... broke right through the glass. They had like the... The plexiglass, the plexiglass sunroof, sunroof or whatever. Roof, yeah. And, yeah, then they flipped it over. So those kids were screaming. Mm-hmm. They were flashing mm-hmm. the light. Stand still. Turn the light off. <laughs> Turn the light off. Uh, oh, I love that movie. That's my yeah, favorite movie of all time. That's right. Thanks for ruining them, Chris Pratt. Appreciate it, buddy. I got to take a break here. If you want to send a text, uh, 35192. Our friend Jim Twos is going to be in a little bit later on. He's doing one show tonight at Hilarities. And it's always at your peril that you miss a Jim Twos show. So we'll catch up with him later. I'll have those uh, Chili Peppers tickets. A handful of people texting me about those. It'll be closer to 420. And if you want to text for anything here, a 35192, and we'll be back. It's the Ellen Park Show. Everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app or whatever smart device you have. Just tell me to play the Alan Cox Show on iHeartRadio. Getting quality employees to fill positions in your company is essential. But finding those people can be a major hassle. Unless you use ZipRecruiter. ZipRecruiter makes finding quality people a breeze. And right now you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. With ZipRecruiter, one click sends your job to hundreds of top job sites. But more than that, ZipRecruiter's advanced technology identifies the candidates with the skills you need, sends you a list of great matches to review, then actively invites them to apply for your job. And the results speak for themselves. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. That's right, the first day. Now you can focus on your business and let ZipRecruiter do the work finding the best people for you. See for yourself. Experience the ease, efficiency, and power of ZipRecruiter for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. ZipRecruiter.com slash radio. On the app or in store, Cleveland runs on Duncan. Hey, McKenzie here. If you've been looking for a car, truck, or SUV that's in stock and ready for immediate delivery, you'll find it today at Ken Ganley, Ohio's number one automotive retailer. With 23 brands, 50 locations, and over 6,000 new and used vehicles in stock, you're sure to find the perfect vehicle at the perfect price. For the location nearest you, visit KenGanleyAuto.com. Ken Ganley, we drive Ohio. The Planet Fitness Black Card is packed with perks, not like other gyms. Hi, can I bring a friend to work out? Oh, is my membership good at other locations? Okay. But at Planet Fitness, the PF Black Card gives you tons of perks. Bring a friend for free anytime. Access to any of our 2,500 plus locations and more. Join for just $1 down, $24.99 a month. Cancel anytime. Deal ends March 15th. Planet Fitness is the preferred gym of the Cleveland Cavaliers. See Home Club for details. Win a trip to Vegas and compete for a chance to win $10,000 in the Bud Light Mini Hoops Finals Tournament. Qualify for your chance to win by registering at WMMS.com or by participating in a Mini Hoops Challenge event near you. Visit WMMS.com for locations and all the details. Currents issued by Sutton Bank and Celtic Bank members of DIC terms and conditions apply. Are you the decision maker in your company? Consider this. For the first time in decades, there's a better option for a corporate card and spend management platform. Meet Ramp, the only corporate card and spend management system designed to help you spend less money so you can make more. Most corporate credit cards offer points as incentives, but those points amount to less than their worth in real cash value. Ramp's corporate cards offer you cash back, real money in your pocket. Plus, you control who spends what with each vendor. And Ramp software collects and verifies receipts automatically which means you'll stop wasteful spending and close your books in hours instead of days. Businesses that use Ramp add up to 5% to their bottom line the first year. If you're a decision maker, adding Ramp could be one of the best decisions you've ever made. And now get $250 when you join Ramp. Just go to ramp.com slash radio. Ramp.com slash radio. R-A-M-P dot com slash radio. Life's better with American Family Insurance. Because our home policies help protect your dreams and come with peace of mind. Save up to 25% by bundling home, auto, and life. American Family Insurance. Get a quote, find an agent at amfam.com.
Products not available in every state. Discounts may not apply to all coverages on an auto or home policy. Discounts do not apply to life insurance policies. Visit Amfem.com to learn how discounts may apply to you. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, S.I. and its operating companies, American Family Life Insurance Company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Tired of overpaying for wireless with Verizon? Now you can put T-Mobile to the test for free. T-Mobile's Network Pass lets you test drive America's largest 5G network for three months while you keep your current phone and carrier. Get real-time stats and see how T-Mobile's coverage stacks up against Verizon. Plus, families and small businesses can save up to 20% versus Verizon when they switch. At T-Mobile, you don't have to choose between a great network and a great price. You get both. See for yourself with our no-strings-attached three-month free trial. Download the T-Mobile app to get started today or visit our store to learn more. One trial per user. Compatible unlock 5G device required. Plan savings with T-Mobile third line free on essentials or go 5G plus via monthly bill credits versus comparable available plans. Plan features and taxes and fees may vary. Credits stop if you cancel any lines or change plans. See details at T-Mobile.com. Barrio Tacos is the heart of the neighborhood. Enjoy late night happy hours Sunday through Friday, 9 p.m. to close. Build your own nachos, 20-ounce margaritas, and 20-ounce draft beers at a discounted price at a Barrio Tacos near you. Your local taco joint is never too far away. Cleveland Clothing Company, the land's one-stop shop for all things Cleveland. Cleveland tees, hoodies, accessories, and of course, the official MMS buzzer gear. Use the promo code CLOVER all month long for 20% off in-store or online. ClevelandClothing.com, the brand of the land. The Monsters continue their playoff push when they take on the league-leading Hershey Bears on Friday, March 22nd at 7. It's WGAR Country Music Night plus a 1-2-3 Friday with $1 coats, $2 hot dogs, and $3 Labatt Blue. It's a hockey hoedown on a Friday night. For tickets, head to clevelandmonsters.com. She posted about us just now. Celebrities can't get enough of Bianca's bespoke skincare line. She has 147 million followers. How do we monetize? She needs a social media associate to help her with the hype. We should repost this. Do we need a hashtag? Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. You can schedule and conduct virtual interviews all from your employer dashboard. Visit indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. At Target, our prices for Easter are so low, you can put all your eggs in one basket. Surprise them with Target-exclusive favorite day treats, like our unique chocolate bunny and a cute basket, all from just $4. Add in some fun with a six-pack of bubbles, 50-piece sidewalk chalk, and super soft stuffed animals, all from $5. And get great family pics with new Easter looks. It's easy with women's and girls' dresses for only $20 and under. Low prices on everything for Easter? Now that's Target. The 2024 NCAA Women's Final Four is coming to Cleveland, and there's a reason for it. Actually, there are many reasons. It's coming here for the city's reputation, rock and roll roots, for its culture, for its unbeatable love for the game of basketball, and especially for the fans. Come for it all, April 4th to the 7th, as Cleveland will turn into the epicenter of the most anticipated events of the year. Game on, Cleveland. Learn more at NCAA.com slash Women's Final Four. Start clean with Clorox because Clorox delivers a powerful clean every time. Because messes happen. Because... Hey, listen. Remember how you told me to toss those takeout containers before we left for vacation? And you were like, I'm serious. If that leaks over the counter, it'll be a slimy abomination by the time I get back. And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Don't worry about it. I won't forget. <laughs> well. Ooh, yeah. That happens. So start clean with Clorox. Use Clorox products as directed. Rinse after use if in contact with food surface. Traffic. From the Elk and Elk Traffic Center, if you were injured because of medical malpractice, call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. Still dealing with that accident blocking the left lane, Jennings Freeway southbound before West 14th, and road construction blocking the right lane in Portage County, I-76 westbound after Route 44. See an accident we don't, give our tip line a call 216-986-8888. I'm Mike Ross in the Traffic Center. This report is sponsored by Levin Furniture and Mattress. 
Tempur-Pedic and Casper mattresses are never 50% off. Until now, during our greatest storewide March mattress event at Levin, every Casper and Tempur-Pedic display model mattress is 50% off at Levin Furniture and Mattress. Self-described hillbilly detective Todd Matthews spent years reuniting the lost dead with their families until one of them called him alive and well. Tune in to Hello, John Doe, the new true crime podcast that investigates his harrowing journey and follows his quest to discover his true identity. And I told him, I said, you're going to believe this. I said, I don't blame you if you don't believe it, because this sounds crazy. And I started explaining, and he took the time to listen. Listen to Hello, John Doe on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. He keeps his emergency bug out bag in his trunk. Unfortunately, it contains only Pez, comic books, and moist towelettes. <laughs> the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. Alan, tell those guys there's a place on Brook Park Road called Four Wheel Parts that has a Jurassic Park Jeep inside. Hey, you're looking at that. Three cool. wheels. No, four wheels. Two wheels. No, four wheel parts is what One they're... One wheel. Uh, don't listen to me. Uh, so there you go. You could go check that out, and um, uh, maybe you could have <clears throat> uh, the owner of it on uh, Cake by the Lake. Perhaps. <laughs> I mean, because it's only... You said you're only doing 15 minutes, yeah? Yeah, it's only 15 You could talk to anybody about anything for 15 minutes. Yeah, for Yeah. Sure. And and five of that is while we're tasting cake. <laughs> oh, that's part of it. Mm-hmm. You taste a little. Cake oh, I thought that. you were just referring to your nickname. That and it, oh, you literally. Well, yeah. how are you going to eat cake with somebody on Zoom? It's on Instagram, but yeah, it. I mean, you hold the cake up and you eat it while we talk. Wait, you eat it or you both eat? Have we, to. We both have a cake. You both have a cake. You mm-hmm. tell them to buy a oh. cake. Wouldn't it be easier if you just had them over and you were both eating the same cake? You could interlock arms, you know, like uh, when people are toasting at a wedding or something? Sure. If they came over, then, yeah, we'll provide the cake. But since they're not over. I see. So the prep for this is you say, hey, I'd love to have you on. Go buy a cake. A, a side note, you need to buy a cake. Mm-hmm. Have a piece of cake. Same one? <laughs> no, it doesn't have to be. Oh, eating two different <laughs> kinds of cake. Mm-hmm. And I say, what's on your cake? How do you like eating your cake? What's your favorite cake? <laughs> and that's five minutes. That's, uh, that's like the out. preamble. I got to start watching this. Uh, well, you can watch it tonight. What time? Eight. Eight o'clock. All right. Yeah, maybe. I got some work to do tonight, so I'll, well, I'll try to poke my head in there. Well, again, it's also posted to my to my story on my Instagram, so yeah. you can watch it there after it's uploaded. All right. Uh, Cavaliers uh, lost. No, they won. No, won. They, they won, won night. against the Pelicans. Oh, that was a big win, too. 116 to 95 over the Pelicans down there in the Leans. And uh, they will head to Houston Saturday. So nothing tonight, nothing tomorrow night. Uh, must be nice, Cavaliers. And then um, Saturday afternoon ish, 5 o'clock is what I'm seeing. Early ish game against hey, the. What? Works. Aren't you 5 o'clock on Saturday too? <laughs> I sure am. I don't know why, but yeah, I'm out in Brunswick. So people our, can uh, go uh, to uh, that yeah. and then zoom on over yeah. to my show in Akron. I see. There's yeah. plenty of time. What time does your show start? 7 o'clock. Oh, at 7. So my show's at 7 in Akron. At, uh, but you probably have a, you have a couple of openers. Right, yeah. So you would go on. Right, but <laughs> you want to show up for the whole show for a comedy show. It's I only see. 90 minutes. Understood. It's not like a rock show where it's four hours long and you <laughs> like oh i don't want to get there and three or four yeah. openers yeah. starts at 5 45 like having people show up as i'm on like get walking on stage is not ideal mm-hmm. you want them to already be marinated in the comedy and ready to laugh exactly yeah and i marinated. book funny people to open too so i want to you know people to see them too so sean france and hannah belmont okay hannah goes to pound cakes hometown school Oberlin College? Yeah, she goes to Oberlin. Oh, all right. But she's from Chicago. Hey! So she's connected there in you go. many ways. <clears throat> she couldn't find any liberal arts universities in Chicago? She wanted to go to Oberlin. Good for her. She's like, I want Oberlin. Yeah, so I will be in Brunswick Saturday night uh, for the last semifinal round of our uh, Bud Light March Mini Hoops Challenge. And it is from 5 to 7. 
at a place called Hot Shots, I believe, is where I am on Saturday. Hot Shots Sports Bar and Grill. You know, you can go to a lot of places that have a bar. You can go to a lot of places that have a grill. It's when you find a bar and grill under one roof that you want to make sure that you're planting your flag in that joint and you know uh, that you're going to end up getting the cream of the crop coming out and hanging out. So that is Saturday. Bill's out tonight and tomorrow night Yeah, for this thing. We're going to be at the porch tonight <clears throat> in Willoughby, 7 to 9, and then tomorrow, Middleburg Heights at the Islander, 7 to 9. So if you think that you have some acumen with Papa Shot, it would probably behoove you to come out and try to get in on this because one person, we're doing the finals on the 23rd, and all of the people who have won their rounds in this thing, because we get two winners each uh, stop do, all come out. And then one of those people is going to go to Vegas. And there's $10,000 on the line in Vegas. I wonder how many people in the finals in Vegas. Yeah, I don't know. It's got to be hundreds of people, right? I, don't I mean, know it's not going to you're not, I imagine, that, not that many. I don't know about hundreds. I, maybe 64 to represent the 64 teams in the tournament. Oh. that's That would be my guess. I saw they've put all of the signage up downtown here for the women's Final Four. That's exciting. <laughs> that, that, that's the response I expected. The women's Final Four, Final Four NCAA Women's Final Four basketball. Ah. The NCAA Women's Final Four uh, is at uh, the Romo Fijo. Final Four teams, and Final so, Four dribbles, um, Final Four shots. No, you tell me. You tell me what you think it is. The Final Four teams... The final four dribbles or the final four shots? I'm going to say final four teams. No, I think you're correct. Yeah. Okay. They don't call them Cleveland's best sports talker for nothing. No, they do not. The readers of Cleveland Scene have spoken. Speaked it. Speaked it. The readers of <laughs> Cleveland Scene have speaked it. They spoke it out into the universe, and there it is, April 5 through 7. So that's not far off, the 2024 women's basketball final four. Uh, here in Cleveland, Ohio, and that's a big, big deal, uh, according to all of the signage that's being placed downtown. Speaking of Bud Light, because we're doing these uh, uh, mini hoops things, I was coming to work on the shoreway this morning as I was turning uh, into downtown here. I was behind a Bud Light truck, a guy delivering Bud Light, and I wondered in all that Michigas around all that fake right-wing outrage over Bud Light. You think the guys driving the trucks felt weird? Do you think they cared? You know, uh, I, I don't, you know, to, to paint with a broad brush, there's probably a lot of guys driving beer trucks who uh, don't really care what's going on out there in the ether. But if you're driving around in a giant Bud Light beer truck, I wonder if the guys driving the trucks ran into any uh, people screaming at them along the way. I bet some of them did. I don't I know wonder. how many, but there was probably some. I mean, there's no way to know. But it's something you never think about, you know? And all these people uh, get their undies in a twist over, I don't know. Th- that's how you know things are going pretty well when people are really bending over backwards looking for stuff to be pissed off about. But for that brief moment in time where everybody was fake mad at Bud Light, um, you know, you don't maybe stop and think about the people who are transporting those materials. You know, because some guys are driving a truck. It's just got the distributorship on the side. It's not committed to any particular brand. But right. a lot of guys are driving, women too, driving trucks that are devoted to that brand. I was behind a giant Bud Light truck, and I was sitting there going, I wonder if that guy had it. You know, like he was driving somewhere, and uh, somebody threw an orange at his truck. I don't know if it got to the level of projectiles, but, you know, I don't know if, um, I don't know how that, that plays out. I'd be interested to know. You want to leave us voicemails, you can do that. Uh, plenty of people opt uh, to call our phone line rather than leave messages on the iHeartRadio app. It's just personal preference. Uh, it's 216-986-8903. Hey, Alan, John, and Mayfield listening to the podcast. And Mary is educating you on Cleveland po' boys, and she is wrong. Those are called Polish boys, not po' boys. Po' boys are served in Louisiana, typically with fried oysters, lettuce, tomato, and mayo on a French bread. Come on, Mary, get it together. You grew up here. You should know those are Polish boys. Hmm. She was giving me bad information. I guess when she was describing it yesterday, I assumed that maybe Poe was a Northeast Ohio short for Polish. I guess I really hadn't thought of it, but that guy really, I wonder if that guy's a New Orleans native, he really uh, took it to heart. Upset to conflate the Poe boys 
uh, with the Polish boys. I'm gonna be honest. I just found out right now. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. You I didn't thought, know. I thought a Polish boy and a Polish boy <laughs> were the same thing. So thank you for educating us. Well, because the Polish boy, you know, um, this boy is so Polish. <laughs> Cleveland, in all uh, honesty, can't really lay claim to too much cuisine of its own. But the Polish boy is Cleveland's own, right? The po' boy, to his uh, point, is, yeah, that's a different thing. But I don't eat either of them, so what do I care? Uh, But the Polish boy is native to Cleveland, which is an amazing thing in and of itself. I know there's a large Polish contingent in a lot of cities uh, around the Midwest. I grew up in one. But the Polish boy being native to Cleveland, you got to hand it to him. You got to like kielbasa, and not everybody does. Uh, you got to like the coleslaw, and not everybody does. You got to like the fries, and all of it slathered. How do you feel about slathering? How do you feel about slather as a verb? I don't, I'm not, Are you pro or con slather? I don't really care for it. You don't care for a slathering. Slather. I bet there are some things you wouldn't mind being slathered. Yeah, but not when it comes to food. (laughs) Oh, I see. (laughs) Maybe humans on the beach, you'd like to see them slathered, right? Slather them. Yes. Sunscreen. Yep. Oils. Yep. Lotions. Saths. Yeah. Oh, she likes kielbasa. That's her dish. She likes kielbasa better than fish. You see what they're saying there, Bill. I get it. It's a little doublon if you will. She likes kielbasa better than fish. But they're not saying she doesn't like fish. That she just likes she kielbasa, kielbasa better. In a pinch, she'll eat fish. She'll eat fish. Especially the during right Lent. Fish. Yeah. She goes the other way during Lent. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I hate it. How do you feel about fish? Depends on what type of fish it is. How about a haddock? What is that? It's a fish. How about a cod? What is that? We're talking about fish, right? Well, I don't think I've ever had it. Ah, all right. But like, I don't like anything with with, like any type of sausage that has a, a. You don't like the casing. Yeah. And that's exactly what Mary said she likes. She likes the pop. Ugh, yeah. She yeah. That. Like like pop. like brats. Like. Ugh. Oh, you don't like any of that. Mm-mm. Hot dogs mm. have a casing. You like a hot dog, right? It's not the same. It's, they don't pop. They don't pop it, like it's that. It's not a pop. It, it all goes in one bite, not mm. a. And then you bite into it. Ugh. Because mm-hmm. then juices fall out once you like bite into it. Yeah, so the Polish boy here in Cleveland has got all that kind of stuff. I mean, when I was a kid, people who liked the the uh, the Polish. Uh, in Chicago, it was, it was like mustard and onions and that kind of stuff. But I never got into those either. It, it wasn't really for me. My, my wife is 110% Polish, so it's kind of like, you know, um, her extended family. All that stuff is very, very popular. Yeah, we weren't very ethnic with our cuisine <laughs> in Ohio. Well, like, yeah, like, I, mean, like, I grew up here, but, like, this isn't stuff that my my dad's not a sports guy, so we didn't, like, tailgate or anything like yeah. that. Or of English descent. Yep. On both Not known sides. for its cuisine. Yeah. So Eastern our, European well, cuisine. Well, we grew up a- eating. If I had to say, like we had like a family meal, it's a very dry roast. <laughs> that's that's what my <laughs> and mom, who would make it? Your mom, my mom would, make would make it, it on Sundays, and she'd put it in before we went for church. Okay. And then we get home, and then she would uh, take it out, and it'd be like a, a hard log of meat. <laughs> a hard log of meat. <laughs> that's what it was like, <laughs> and it was it was dry. Like I remember. Just thinking, okay, this is what good roast is like. And then I had a good roast, and I was like, oh, Your life my changed. God, this is, it's so juicy. Yeah, your life changed. <laughs> you don't need uh, gravy or A1 to choke it down. <laughs> it's like the very first time somebody served me, like, a medium steak. Yeah. I was like, oh, my God, what meat is this? Yeah. And they're like, it's steak. I go, this isn't steak. Steak tastes like shoe leather. They go, no, 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 this is how a steak is supposed to be cooked. I was like, oh, my God. Ah, oh, this is amazing. And it actually comes with other things? Yeah, well, you know. I think the only time I've, the only steak I've really explored was like well. I won't go any any lighter a than A steak that. out of a well? No, like a well. Oh, a well done steak. steak. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was no, going to say. Had, you've had 
when we went to Red, you didn't have a well done steak. I don't think I ordered that though. Like I think I tasted someone else's. I well, we had steak and you, yeah. So you liked it because it was so smooth. <laughs> yeah, you like the smooth steak. I'm just saying, don't ever eat a steak out of a well, okay? I'll, I'll do my best. If, let's say you're like walking through the forest or something, and you, you'd happen to come across a well, mm-hmm. and you look down there, and you go, "Oh my God, there's there's cuts of meat floating in there." Don't try to scoop those out. Ugh, stinky, stinky. Well, whatever. Just keep on walking. Wherever you're headed, there's probably a place you can get food properly cooked at the end of your journey. You don't know that for sure, though. Well, it depends on where you're going, but you know we're not we're in civilization. I'm just not a big steak person. Like I have, I don't have steak on a regular basis. This is usually like a special occasion. If I'm like, it's not often I go to a steakhouse and actually get steak. So we went to me and my girlfriend went to uh, Texas Roadhouse on Saturday because she was having a hankering for it. <laughs> So. I've never been. How oh, is, dude, you uh, gotta go. It's Texas the, Roadhouse. Yeah, it's, okay. Uh, I call it Texas uh, Olive Garden. Mm-hmm. Uh, and now, why is, is that? Because when you're like there, the your chain family. Restaurant when you're there, version. you're kin. Yeah, it's like the you know, it's the Texas version of that level of food. Like it's good. It's not. It, I, I think it's honestly better than Olive Garden, but I still also like Olive Garden. Uh, yeah, it's a good place. You what should, did you have? I had a steak. Like a fillet, yep. And so your girl goes. I've got you know what I've got a hankering for. She wanted the rolls, Texas Roadhouse. The rolls, okay. yeah. She wanted the rolls. That, that's what she was mainly going for. And then uh, what did I get? Oh, with a baked potato. Just nothing, nothing crazy. It was good. Baked potato and a, a steak. Yeah. So did they give you like one of those giant? Like it's like a forty-eight ounce porterhouse. No, you got no, the fillet. No, no I yeah. got like a. Six ounce. I wasn't. Gotcha. I wasn't trying to. You weren't like, trying. To, <laughs> I wasn't trying to win any T-shirt or anything uh-huh. like that. I got. We got. We got small. Snakes. You ever take over Big Red's trucking right. route? Because also, died. the bread there does a lot of heavy lifting. Like I want to be able to have two or three rolls, and mm-hmm. so you know, didn't want to go crazy. That sounds like a lot of. It sounds like a lot of starch. It is. Baked but potato they're real and good. rolls. They're okay. good. It's good. I don't. But even I, didn't, know. I didn't even. I didn't even eat half of the baked potato. Like, by the time I got to the baked potato, I was like, ah, I'm, I'm pretty You had already good. filled up on bread. Bread and steak, yes. I don't even know where there's a Texas roadhouse around me. Illyria, the there's one, one in, There's one in Parma. You go the one in Illyria, the one that I went to. That's not too far from you. Illyria? Yeah. That's that 20. sounds like a haul. That's, That's the probably, one you went to? It's probably 20 minutes. Yeah, right there in the, in the shadows of the Midway Mall. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right off the highway there? You spent through a lot. You leave that mall alone. <laughs> yeah, right off the highway. They used to have movie theaters there, right? They still do this Atlas Cinemas. Oh, do they really? Yeah, is think, it the only thing left? I think it's still open. I think that thing is still, like, they were supposed to close, and then right at the last minute, somebody, like, swooped in. Yeah. and Angel and, investor, as they say. <laughs> something like that, and it's still kicking, because I've, I've gone. We're going to gonna remain bringing cinema to the fine people of Illyria, Ohio. I've gone and the surrounding the area. Uh-huh. Lorraine County is. There you go. Relying on that, people from Waterbury can come and watch movies here, and people from uh, Midway and Amherst, Vermilion, and Sheffield, Oberlin, all welcome in our brand new Wellington, brand new state of the art movie. Are you from Wellington and you want to see a talkie? (laughs) (laughs) Well, Oberlin. What? No moving pictures in South Lorraine. Come on down to Illyria. Oberlin has their own movie theater. They have a two-screen cinema. Oh, you still got a twin cinema? Uh, yeah, it's Apollo. Oh, I, think- I love it. We used to go. We used to have a twin right by college, the 400 twin. You see, that's where I saw. Uh, that's where I saw. Well, not during college, but when I first moved back for work, that's where I saw. I think Batman Begins, the first Batman oh. one with Christian Bale. Saw that the 400 twin. It didn't used to be that way though. Like Apollo, when I was growing up, was just one big movie theater. And then the college bought it. Danny DeVito is like a partner in it, mm. and they took it over. So I don't know if they have – I know they have two screens, but I don't know if they used the other one. The other one might just be for the college. But it's it's a real nice, like, newly renovated movie theater. They didn't call it DeVito Cinemas? I don't believe so. Mm. Texas Roadhouse. It says it doesn't accept reservations. Well, that's going to cut me out because I, I need a very specific time on the books. Well, what time do you need? 
I don't know. I just like to know that if I can call them and go, hey, can I get a can I get a booth for two? What and they time? go, I'm sorry, we don't accept reservations. Oh. And I'll say, well, then I'm afraid I can't uh, patronize I mean, the your place was busy. We went for lunch. Yeah. And it oh, was this is busy. middle of the day. Yeah, this is because ah, uh, I had a show that night, and I didn't want to have a big meal before the show, so we kind of had our big meal in the middle of the day, and that was kind of it. Mm-hmm. I feel like you would be more apt to that. And it wasn't even like a huge meal, like I said. I, I didn't go crazy, but it was enough food for the day. Well, maybe one of these days <clears throat> I'll have to get to one of these places because I've never been. I've never been to the an Outback. The are good, baby. And I've never been to a Texas Roadhouse. Never been to Outback. Th- th- this says that they're known for their fall-off-the-bone ribs, and I hear that a lot. Our ribs are fall-off-the-bone, and it just I'm not that lazy. I can take the meat off. I don't need it to sit there. I'm not going to sit there and wait for them to fall off the bone. You don't right? have to wait. As soon as Boy, you that sounds the like bone, a lot. It falls off. Uh, yeah, I'm done. I'm, I, I'm not. I don't subscribe to that brand of laziness. I'm happy to take the meat off the ribs. I'll do a little bit of work if I'm the one benefiting from it. Hello, Ellen. Hi. How are you guys? Oh, fine as frog's hair. How are you? Oh, I'm okay. It's going to rain, but I'm okay. You feel it in your knees? Hey, I wanted to know if, uh, uh, yeah, I have a fake knee. So, yeah, I, I don't feel She feels one, fake rain feels in her fake one. knee. Mm, uh-huh. <laughs> Real rain in her fake knee. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I currently have a broken leg, too, so it's really pleasant. But Are you I'm back playing know. rugby again, Ellen? How many times oh, have I told no, you? I'm... Stay <laughs> off the I pitch. I started with beer league, beer league softball, though. That's when I started. All my right. 20s. Yeah. Yeah. Carried all that with you, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, how about spam? Was that one of your Sunday dinners, like my house? Fried spam. Well, my mom would it's cook it in the pan. Rain. She'd fry it in the pan. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, I haven't had spam crap. for a long, long Vienna time. Little Vienna wieners. Little Vienna <laughs> wieners in the can. Those are so gross. <laughs> yeah, Vienna wieners. Uh, Vienna. Yeah, they just took, took Trump out the yard. Little <laughs> wiener. But anyway. Okay. Um, I just wanted to say thanks for <laughs> making me laugh. And uh, All right. hey, tomorrow at six o'clock when you go, can you dig up some uh, got to got to get down? Damn it! Uh, yeah, yeah, we'll do that tomorrow. No, yeah, I'll, I'll do the get down tomorrow. Yeah. I can't. It's yeah, Thursday. We, can't, it's not the weekend. Tomorrow, yeah. I can't start the weekend Friday, on Thursday. Thursday, right? Okay, well, thank you, you can, Ellen. But... Well, listen, <laughs> boy, she's out there and she's Ellen. I am. She's all I'm... over the place. Thank you, dear. I appreciate it. She's like, well, you can. My knee says you can. I feel a get down in my knee. Well, I'm sorry, Ellen. It's not the way things are done around here. If we don't have order, then it's chaos. I've got a break. Want to send me a text? 35192 to do that. You can listen wherever you are on the iHeartRadio app. This Welcome to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Will again not be their year. They are the snubbed. Snubbed. Snubbed again. Snubbed again this year. No bands not yet welcomed into the hallowed halls of Cleveland's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame snubs. So, this weekend, the buzzard will honor the outcast. Biggest snub. It's bullshit. From Alice in Chains to White Zombie. Yeah. And all the snubbed in between. They got snubbed again. With snubble shots. Back to back songs from the Rock Hall's biggest snubs. Rejected by the Rock Hall. Snubble shots. All this weekend on 100.7 Snubble UMMS. This is Doug Gottlieb. Here's what's trending from the iHeart Sports Network. Presented by Floor Coverings International. Two top college hoops coaches are being rewarded for their successes. South Carolina's Lamont Paris and Florida's Todd Golden are getting contract extensions. Kent State is moving on in the Mid-American Conference Tournament. They upset top-seeded Toledo this afternoon. Akron will face Miami next. And the Browns are signing former Jets defensive tackle Quentin Jefferson to a one-year deal. Jefferson's coming off a career-best six sacks last season. I'm Scott Davidson. Floor Coverings International earns star ratings for everything from their mobile showroom, local ownership and operation, to customer satisfaction. So go with the stars of flooring. Visit fcifloors.com today. Keep on trucking with Valley Ford of Huron. Tax Talk with Straight Talk. You give and you give. This tax season you get with Straight Talk Wireless. You get a reliable 5G network and unlimited data and a new Samsung Galaxy A15 for just $99. So you can give your janky phone to your kid. Yeah! 
Good talk. Switch to Straight Talk for plans starting as low as $25 a line per month for four lines. Find us at Walmart and straighttalk.com. For network management practices, visit straighttalk.com. Device offer ends 41424. In-store activation on single silver unlimited plan or higher required. Family plan discount with four lines all on the silver unlimited plan. Taxes and fees apply. The free iHeartRadio app has over 100 commercial free stations like the Vinyl Experience. Just search Vinyl Experience and listen now on your free iHeartRadio app. Free never sounded so good. Auto show savings are here at Ken Ganley, Ohio's number one Kia dealer. We've got all the hot new 2024 Kia models, over 800 on sale, including Celtos, K5, Sportage, Sorento, Forte, Soul, Carnival, and Telluride. Price starts from just $19,988. That's right, $19,988. Like a new 24 Kia Forte LX. Buy with as low as 0% APR financing for 60 months. Zero down. 0% financing for 60 months. Got a trade? We want to pay it off, regardless of what you owe. At Ken Ganley Kia in Medina. Mentor, Alliance, and Boardman. Or online at KenGanleyKia.com. Tell them McKinsey sent you, because I want to see you in a Ken Ganley Kia. 1667 per thousand financed on a 24 Kia EV6 plus tax, tag, title, and dock field approved credit through KMF. Number one in overall retail Kia sales in the central region from 1 1 to 12 31 23 per Kia Motors year end sales report expires 4 30 24. Every March, Jersey Mike's turns money from subs into charitable donations. And March 27th is Jersey Mike's annual day of giving, where 100% of sales from every sub are given back to the community. And to kick off all that giving, Peter gave me an apron. I'm honored. Looking good, Danny. We've got subs to make, though. Yeah, now I know why you gave me the apron. (laughs) Join us Wednesday, March 27th, for Jersey Mike's Day of Giving. Be a sub above. Hurry in for limited time favorites priced low at Giant Eagle, Get-Go, and Market District. We've locked in prices on more than 1,000 items across the store. Products you want, brands you trust. All earning my perks on every trip. Perks that are good for free gas and groceries. Price lock is here at Giant Eagle, Get-Go, and Market District, where savings add up every day. For the ones who work hard to ensure their crew can always go the extra mile. And the ones who get in early so everyone can go home on time. There's Granger, Offering professional-grade supplies backed by product experts so you can quickly and easily find what you need. Plus, you can count on access to a committed team ready to go the extra mile for you. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger, For the ones who get it done. Your afternoon drive is brought to you by the Ken Ganley Auto Group, Ohio's number one automotive retailer. It's back. Our best sale of the year is here. All loans, all terms, all on sale. Remodel your kitchen? Check. Roof repairs? Check. Consolidate your debt for more affordable monthly payments? Check. Now is the time to make it happen with budget-friendly borrowing options tailored to your needs. But hurry, the Dollar Bank loan sale ends March 30th. Save big at dollar.bank slash loan sale. Dollar Bank, equal housing lender, member FDIC. Hey, baseball fans, step up to the plate for the Spectrum Back to Baseball Sweepstakes. Go to a participating Spectrum store and enter for your chance to win our all-star prize, a 50-inch smart TV, hundreds of winners selected. Hustle, sweepstakes ends March 17th. Enter for your chance to win. For more information and official rules, go to spectrum.com slash 2024 TV sweeps. No purchase necessary. Open to U.S. residents 18 plus in Kansas, Kentucky, Illinois, Ohio, Missouri, and Wisconsin. Odds of winning vary by location. Void where prohibited. Hey there, this is Doug Jackson from Jackson Comfort Services, and we're turning up the heat with our same-day service guarantee. When your furnace is blowing cold air, who has time to wait? Call Jackson Comfort before 2 p.m., and we'll promise to have your repair done same day, or we'll put you up in a hotel. That's right, Jackson Comfort's got you covered. Same day, or we pay for your stay. Don't wait. Call Jackson Comfort or visit us online at jacksoncomfort.com. Jackson Comfort Services, your comfortable choice for heating, cooling, plumbing, and now drains. All rise. In a Massachusetts courtroom, the judge concluded that the defendant shredded evidence in the case. The defendant, Bernie Marino, who was sued for stealing his employees' pay. So before the trial, Marino shredded the evidence against him. Shadiness is a pattern with Marino, who quietly supported amnesty for millions of illegals, but now pretends otherwise. 
You can tell a lot about someone's character by what he does when no one's watching. Bernie Marino flunks that test. And Secretary of State Frank LaRose is no better. LaRose quietly spent your tax dollars to benefit himself politically. And LaRose changed Ohio's ballot language to affect the election results. It was a breach of public trust. Bernie Marino and Frank LaRose, if they're this sneaky and corrupt in Ohio, just imagine if they go to Washington. Buckeye Leadership Fund paid for and is responsible for the content of this advertising. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. Buckeyeslead.org. Start clean with Clorox because Clorox delivers a powerful clean every time. Because messes happen. Because... Oh, my God, the charcoal mess. Great, because why would I put that on my face when I could drop it in my sink? This is what I get for multitasking. Ugh, why is charcoal so sticky? <clears throat> Hello? Hey, Janice. I am so sorry. I thought I was on mute. <laughs> no, we don't need to reschedule. I'll just stay off camera. Ooh, yeah, that happens. So start clean with Clorox. Use Clorox products as directed. Get the one and done you want for your dog's monthly protection. Next Guard Plus, a Foxal Honor Moxie Dectin and Pyrantal Chewable Tablets. Protects against fleas, ticks, heartworm disease, roundworms, and hookworms. All in one delicious beef flavored soft chew. Use with caution in dogs with a history of seizures or neurologic disorders. Dogs should be tested for existing heartworm infection prior to starting a preventive. Ask your vet about Next Guard Plus Chews. Mike Snyder for Ken's Park Hill Roofing. Notice wet spots in your attic? Ice buildup on your eaves and gutters? It's time to have your roof taken care of before the spring rains hit. Call Park Hill today. Ken's Park Hill Roofing, home of the one-day roof. Portions of the following program were pre-recorded. This is The Buzzard. From the Bath Authority Studios. 100.7 WMMS. Cleveland. Call the Alan Cox Show. Girls, this is your opportunity right here. A nice boy. Let me tell you that. 216-578-1007 or Electric Six from Detroit, Michigan. A little help from one Jack White. Boy, these guys were good when we saw them last year. They play that little room in the, um, what's the little room called in the Masonic? That room with all the old, uh, like, mason chairs around oh, it. Oh, I can't remember what it's called. Is that the throne room? It might be what it is. Something but. like that. Who's playing that? Somebody else. Oh, uh. I think I saw an advertisement for Talib Kweli playing there. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we saw Electric Six there last year, and I swear to God, there weren't any more than 50 people in there. I couldn't believe it, but fantastic, fantastic show. Your Cavaliers win big over the New Orleans Pelicans last night, 116-95 to <laughs> is the final. Cavs go to 42-24 and with that win, and uh, they will head to Houston to play the Rockets. They're not doing anything tonight or tomorrow night. Then they're gearing up for a 5 o'clock tip-off on Saturday. Cavs-Rockets here on MMS. That means your pregame will start at 4.30 on the buzzard and on the iHeartRadio app. If you are listening to uh, or watching, rather, our program today at alancockshow.com, tip of the cap to Dipper Rippington, who's assisting today in the video department. D-Rip. Yeah, old D-Rip. I'm being told in the break, by the way, that those Illyria cinemas finally closed. It did? Yeah. But the Atlas cinemas uh, there in Illyria. Oh, I thought they were hanging on uh, for finally. Dear life. Well, they were hanging on for dear life. Somebody said a handful of people that live out there said that they actually closed them just last month. Damn. But they're still putting up Texas roadhouses. They're building one at Great Northern Mall. So if um, your girlfriend gets a hankering, I guess that's not any closer to you than Illyria. Illyria would be closer to you in Lakewood than North Olmsted would be. But um, is that a place that she's partial to, or she, she just, like, that sprung up and she's like, we should go here? She just had, like I said, she had a hankering mm-hmm. for the roles. Mm-hmm. And oh, so, the roles, yeah. And so that that's 
what she wanted, and so that's what she got. Because when a woman knows where she wants to eat, it take her to eat. <laughs> that's right. There's no back and forth. Mm-hmm. There's neither hemming nor hawing. Now, what was funny Where do you want to go? I don't know. Where do you want to go? Here's what I want to go. Nah, I don't want to go there. All right, where do you want to go? I don't know. Where do you want to go? I think I want to go here. Nah, I don't want to go there. All right, then. What's your idea? Well, the trick is. I don't know. You just say, guess where I'm taking you to eat. Oh. And then wherever they say, be like, you're right. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, but but what if they don't guess? They go, I don't know where. You go, you you've, say, got, you ha- you've got you to guess, You have idiot. to tell me. Uh, you have to tell me. We ran a few who, she, so we had this plan for almost a week. And then we, we did a few things. First, we went out to that Avon because she wanted to get a vacuum out there that was at the Walmart and Avon. And so we went and picked that up. We washed my car. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, all right, let's go get food. And she's like, okay, where are we going? I'm like, are you serious right now? And she's like, huh? (laughs) I'm like, you've been planning the meal for a week. Mm -hmm. You'd think she'd she'd be counting down the days. Right. And she's like, oh, yeah, let's go. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, do you know where we're going? And she's like, yes. She had to go all the way to Avon to buy a vacuum? That was just the one that they had, the one that she wanted I see. available that was closest to where I was. Okay. She lives out on the east side. You she got her living that place. hashtag trad wife life. All right, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> hashtag trad wife. Is she vacuuming your place, too? Squifle Tower, did she come up? I didn't ask her to. She did. She wanted to try it out. She She wanted wanted to try try it. She was excited about her vacuum. Uh Uh-huh. She very much likes vacuums. Yep. So she may or may not be called the suck queen because of that. Uh, Because of the vacuum. The vacuum. Yeah. I I like vacuuming, too, but we only have one room in our house with carpet. Oh, okay. So it's like I don't don't really get an opportunity to vacuum that frequently. Uh, It's more, uh, it's more... You know, it's all hardwood except for one room. You can vacuum on. Uh, on I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm not going to do that though. Either. There's other. There's better ways that you can go about cleaning your hardwoods than you know. Well, I mean, but to get the dust and stuff up, like that. Up, oh yeah. Well, you got you the sucker it, for then, that. You walk yeah. around with the sucker, and then you. Well, that's what a vacuum is. <laughs> I mean, the more it's got, like a the Dyson sucker that we have. It's got. It's a vacuum. Yeah, it's but you, but it gets into small. It get, we do have a Dyson vacuum, but we've got the little Dyson hand sucker that you can put the, the th- you can put the nozzle into corners and things. You can't get the vacuum into corners. This is a three-hour ASMR video, by the way, on YouTube, for okay. people who are really, really relaxed. People are wild, you know, because you go, who the hell would want to hear this? There's somebody, somebody guaranteed. There's somebody who just gets all calm. And drowsy at the sound of someone vacuuming. And so there's three hours of it right there. Now, if it takes you longer than three hours to fall asleep, I don't know what to tell you. But it's a brave new world with all that information out there for you. Alan, you wondered if the guys that drive Bud Light trucks got any backlash. The answer is yes. I drive an Entenmann's truck, and I frequently heard about it from the other drivers. I work in a mostly conservative community, and some people are quick to jump on that bandwagon. Yeah, you ain't going to see any Entenmann's boycotts out there, probably. Yeah, you'll never know. Hmm. Bill's girlfriend isn't Mother Nature because nature abhors a vacuum. I get it. I see what you're doing there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> <clears throat> well done. Yeah. So queen. In addition to being Pi Day, do you know why it's Pi Day today, Cody? Uh, 3.14. 3.14, that's right. Now, not to be confused with National Pi Day, P-I-E, that's back in January. P.I. Day gets its own day. Not to be confused with Magnum P.I. Day, which is, well, I don't know when that is, but it should be a I thing. like May. May, probably. And so... Uh, and uh, Sunday was Mario Day? What was that? That's March 10th. So it What's like this? Mario. In- oh, boy. Yeah. Well... You ever see, seen that? I have not seen that. Oh, nope. I know, I know May the 4th. For Star Wars, I know Pi Day. I know we just had 311 Day. If you're a fan of the band 311, that's March the 11th. They announced they're coming to Cleveland. Um, and, but I don't know Mario Day. 
I have another friend that works for Bud Light that said uh, someone almost ran them off the road because he was driving a Bud Light this car. This is what I'm talking like, about. People are insane. Yes, of course. One can, by the way. It was yeah. One can, yeah. not <laughs> printed on all the cans. It was a like year one before can. anybody year got before upset, it, by yeah, the way, yeah. this whole thing happened. And then, of mm. course, if we found out it was all fake. Mm. Kid Rock never stopped drinking it or selling it or the whole, you know, and all these other people were making it, making it all up. But, uh, yeah. But in addition to Pi Day, uh, people will also point out to me that the answer uh, is also Steak and BJ Day is today, too. Remember this? I thought this went away. This started a while back, and it was a response to all the guys who got their lady stuff for Valentine's Day, which was last month, right? Month prior, February 14th. And they were like, I got you all this great stuff for Valentine's Day. What do I get? And somebody came up with March 14th being a steak and a BJ Day, which I thought was long (laughs) gone. But somebody said, hey, have you ever heard of this? And I was like, yes, I have heard of that. In the late 90s, I heard of that. I didn't know that it was still uh, hanging on by its fingers. But I do like the notion of that, that guys had to be dragged kicking and screaming into doing something for a person they love and care about on Valentine's Day. And you can argue back and forth as to whether, you know, of course it's all made up, but, you know, the guys who feel an immense amount of pressure on that day and uh, get really uh, uh, snippy about it, as opposed to thinking, well, I'd really like to do something nice for somebody that I love and care for. Uh, But the answer uh, for a lot of uh, guys is that, well, now you've got to do something for me. Very transactional. Like pound cake. There's there's documents to be signed, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you better sign them. Well, I don't <clears throat> find anything wrong with that if I issue the, disc- the disclaimer up front. Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to trap anybody. It was actually mostly women who sent me the steak and BJ Day thing. So, uh, e- And they seem to do it without a tinge of irony. So there's probably going to be a lot of happy dudes out there today. Uh, but I do like the notion that there has to be. I know be... one that's not going to be so happy. Jim Tooze is staying at my house tonight. <laughs> oh, no. Well, he's going to get. It ain't, which... it ain't free, Jimmy boy. <laughs> Alan, have you ever which been. Which half of that is he going to get? What? Have you ever been to a Schwitz? Yes. Do you like it? Sit in a sauna and, yeah. Well, isn't it like cigars and steaks? Isn't that what oh, they Oh, well, you can do the whole thing, but, I mean, it's just a sauna. What? Taking a Schwitz is just sitting in the sauna. What's the point? So, some guys do a whole thing. Well, I, there's I, like a location that is called no, that. Oh, I know that, but I thought that that was like a universal thing. Like a Schwitz was just like a male bathhouse. Well, no, you, you're sitting in the sauna. Okay. They go, hey, you want to take a Schwitz? You just go and sit in the sauna, you know? I'm, I'm sure there's different iterations of it. In a male bathhouse, well, uh, uh, I don't a, think that they're... A heterosexual back, uh, bathhouse. Yeah, it's just, it's just a guy sitting in the in the sauna. We had one. We had a sauna um, in the gym at Oak Tree. Yeah, I'd go in there every so often. I kind of miss that. Yeah, I never that was nice. That. I never went in that thing. So yeah, some you know, like I don't you had know. To make sure it was on though, because sometimes you'd be like, ah, I'm gonna do a workout, then I'm gonna do the sauna, you and you go in there and it's minutes. and it's seventy <laughs> degrees in there. You're like, what the hell? So yeah, some guys turn it into a whole thing, but like I don't, I don't have bro friends like that. You know, they're like, hey, let's get some cigars. <laughs> and, you know, so to make a oh, whole day out of me. it. I have to cancel the cigar bar thing with a buddy. Cigar bar? Yeah, this guy, my, my, my buddy Steve wanted to go to a cigar bar, and it's like a cigar and scotch because he's, like, really into scotch mm-hmm. and, and, like, like he knows a lot about it. Mm-hmm. And I, I want to go, but it's always on, like, a Friday, and I keep getting booked, and then I got to bail. Like, yeah, no, listen, some people are way into that. That That is not for me. I couldn't give a fat frog's ass about cigars. Uh, but people who are into them are really into them. And uh, uh, God bless them. But the Schwitz is just the sauna. Okay. I mean, for you, it, it, it might be considered like an entree to something else. But for well, some dudes, it's just them sitting around getting their sweat on. Well, yeah, they've... I mean, we have a bathhouse here in Cleveland, so I, I know what goes on there. I just didn't know there was a heterosexual version. I was like, oh. Well, yeah, but it's 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 not sexual in nature is what okay. I'm saying. 
Yeah, okay. And sitting I, a, sitting in a sauna is not inherently sexual just because people are sitting there with just a towel and on. I don't and I don't like a sauna anyway. So it's that was never a turn on for me. I don't like being hot. I don't like being sweaty. I don't want to be around other people's hot and sweatiness. That's that's the thing is I like a sauna. It is not a turn on for me. Yeah. I don't go in a sauna and be like, "Now I'm horny." It, it's relaxing. It just it makes I I enjoy it. It stinks and it's, I don't like but, the smell of the like the what what is it the it's not the coils or the, the uh, well. There's coal. The Some of them coal. there's rocks stones, and there's water yeah. and stones. You know? I don't like that. But uh, they all do it. Like the one at Oak Tree was electric. Yeah, I mean it mm-hmm. wasn't. You know, um, yeah, it's not for everybody. I haven't done one in a while, but I like it. I do kind of keep my eyes on the other people in there because getting being hot does make me horny. Oh, okay. so I got to keep my head on a swivel because they don't know what I'm thinking. Not. <laughs> And I'd like to keep it that way, quite frankly. Just make my balls get their longest. <laughs> balls. Uh, <laughs> hey, put some more water on those stones. Those aren't stones. Bill just got up yeah. to shift himself. They'll they'll be behind me in a minute. Just <laughs> dragging along. He's cosplaying as a pickup truck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can get a home. You can get a home sauna. You can put one in the corner of your. Uh, uh, room. Yeah, I have a friend that has one. Oh, pardon me. I know. Yeah. I thought it was bougie when I saw it. I'm like, how often do you actually? It's like use sitting this? in a humidor. Mm-hmm. I would probably if if I had a sauna and a hot tub, I'd probably use the sauna more than the hot tub. To be honest. Yeah. Well, now I want a sauna and a hot tub. <laughs> yeah. Well. Uh, uh, the iHeartRadio app. If people are listening on there, if you're doing it from out of state, I like to know where you are. Uh, Justin listens in Buffalo. New York. Nick is one of our bureau chiefs in Detroit. Darren's in Honolulu. Uh, Jennifer listens in Fort Worth, Texas. And um, Jonathan is a newer listener in Clanton, Alabama. You can always leave messages there, too. Here's my thing, Alan. I'm all for the spooky and the macabre. Uh, but, you know, I know some people who, who practice Wiccan, Pagan, whatever. How does that work with time zones? Right? They'll say, oh, 3 a.m. is the spookiest hour. In what part of the world? Because <laughs> it ain't 3 a.m. in Japan. Where did that come from? Hey, what's I don't that? know, but that, I mean, that's also... What's the spookiest time? Good questions for... Oh, because we were talking about the witching hour, maybe? Gremlins. And, yeah, the witching hour. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I have friends who are Wiccan, and they say that 3 a.m. is the spookiest time. Well, and when, like... With astrology, does it uh, astrology adjust for daylight savings and leap year and stuff like that? Like, I mean, it's all made know? up, so you can just bend it to your will. You can do whatever you want. So you can go, it's oh, not. this is Alan. It's proven science. <laughs> this is this now. Had, this is this I've now. I've had anecdotal evidence after anecdotal evidence shown to me that it's true. Time is a flat circle. You can manipulate it however you like. You're a flat circle. Well, that's true. But, um, yeah, I, I don't know. That, that's a uh, random question, but um, it's probably a good one. I would think that no matter where you are in the world, 3 a.m., you could pin down as being a spooky time. It's the middle of the night. So they're not saying that it's fixed in one part of the world. At least I don't think that's what they're saying. So If you did find yourself in Japan, you could still stick it to the 3 a.m. thing. Hey, Alan, listening to the podcast from yesterday, and you played the train whistle guy, and it just made me uh, think, who would win in a fight? The oh my god tornado guy, or the oh my god train whistle guy? Love you, love me, hate the show. Bye! Why, why, <laughs> why would they have to fight? Who would win in a fight? I mean, the tornado guy out there in Pittsburgh is very upset about the tornado that's coming. I mean, he's very, very scared. Oh, my scared. God! Tornado! Tornado! He was trying to get everybody out of there, and the train guy's just excited about the train. The tornado guy worried he's going to get hurt. Train guy excited that there's a train there. Oh, my God! Woo! Listen to that horn! Oh, oh my God! Oh, she's beautiful! I mean, that guy is deriving joy from everything he can possibly find, and the other guy's just terrified. If you think I'm going to pit those two uh, gentle souls against each other, you're nuts. Both of those guys sound like lovers, not fighters. Oh, my God! God. 
Listen to that. Tornado! Oh my god! Tornado! Tornado! I don't want those guys to fight. Uh, so in answer to your question, I don't uh, I, I don't know. Who would win in a fight? You know what? Uh, the tornado guy. Because fear is a great motivator. And the other guy is so laser focused on that train, he'd never see the other guy coming. Fears. He's in a world of his own. Just the the way fear is a great way to monetize things, too. Fear is a great monetizer and motivator. It can motivate you to monetize things. I mean... You don't want to be poor, so use fear to fuel that <laughs> that yeah. motivation. Yeah, desperation is mm-hmm. a great way to get things done. We've got to take a break here. Uh, if you want those mammoth WVH tickets, you know Wolfie Van Halen is Eddie's boy. Uh, he's only one, and he's got his own band. He's out on the road making a name for himself, and they are going to come and play Cleveland. Uh, it's not far off. Want to go see Mammoth WVH mid July? They're going to do MGM Northfield Park, and I will hand you tickets after the break. It's the Alan Cox Show. On our free iHeartRadio app and your favorite smart device. Just tell it to play the Alan Cox Show. On iHeartRadio.
destinations waiting for you to explore right now, like the Vinyl Experience. Music legends experienced through the authentic sound of vinyl. The Rolling Stones, Tom Petty, Pink Floyd, The Police, and so many more. Just open the free iHeartRadio app, search Vinyl Experience, and listen now. iHeartRadio. Free never sounded so good. Give the boy, tell me, give the boy, tell me, give the boy, give the boy. All right, you want to go see Mammoth WVH, Wolfgang Van Halen and his band. They're dropping a new album called Mammoth 2. And so subsequently, they're on the Mammoth 2 tour. Wednesday, July 24th, they'll come through. They'll do MGM Northfield Park. Ticketmaster.com has got the full details. Want to go? Throw a couple of tickets here for caller 10. Good luck. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. These days, you have a million ways to entertain yourself. Are you not entertained? This one just puts entertain in air quotes. I am not entertained. The Alan Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS. Three five one nine two. Want to send a text? AlanCoxShow.com. Want to watch live? A Cavs off tonight. Big win though in New Orleans over the Pelicans last night. One sixteen to ninety five. That is a decisive victory. Donovan Mitchell's back, so that makes a big. Oh, is difference. he really? Yeah. Was he was in last night? Was that his return? That to, was his uh, return. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. Uh, what's his name still out? Uh, Evan Mobley. Yeah, the ankle, right? I think he'll be out for the rest of this week, maybe back early next week. Oh, boy. We'll see. But Darius Garland is in? Yeah, he's in. Jared Allen is in? Yep. Still got the fro? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Just throwing it up. Uh, Cavs Rockets is your next shot to um, uh, hear those guys. Saturday, 5 o'clock is the tip-off. So 4.30 on MMS is the pregame coverage. Then they'll go to Indianapolis to play the Pacers on Monday before they come back home. And uh, the remainder of the month, however many days there are left, eh, you got two weeks and some change uh, to use the promo code CLOVER at CLE Clothing Company. Uh, C-L-O-V-E-R, that will get you 20% off. We just got some of the brand new uh, Cleveland uh, sports shirts that MMS yeah, is dropping. Those, and those basketball shirts are good. The MMS, are these up that people can buy them now? Or we're getting so, them? Yeah. yeah, okay. Uh, so there's uh, plenty of MMS gear, though, and uh, anything and everything with the word Cleveland on it, or variations thereof. The land, the cleave. Uh, I wonder if New Orleans Clothing Company has shirts that say, the leans. Come on down to the leans. They knew what's good for them. Yeah, I wasn't sure what the nickname for the basketball team is. I had a couple people text me and say that they call them the Pels. Pels. Which seems really lazy. Uh, but what are you going to do? Sometimes that's all it Pelican, takes. Yeah. So, I mean, you don't have to be too clever. It's the Pels. I mean, it's not like the Cavs was not lazy. It's just Cavaliers shortened. Yeah. What do they call the Bulls for short? The Bulls? <laughs> <laughs> we don't shorten the Bulls. The no, don't shorten the Bulls. The Bulls. Bull, the Bulls. Really Tonight, the Bulls. Yeah. The so, Bulls. Uh, tough season for the Bulls. Yep. That DeMar DeRozan boy, he comes in in the clutch, that dude. Woo! Taking well, they it should, to the Pacers. They like should uh, be in the clutch more often then. Well, he's good when they when well, he does what should, he's supposed to do. They should be in close games more often. <laughs> yes, because, they should. Uh, that would be nice if they were doing that. Hey, they're they're in the ninth seed. Yeah, they're, 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 they sure They can are. maybe do, win a play-in game. And they're running out of seeds. They get into the postseason. Yeah. No, you got to get hip to what they call the teams. When I first moved to Pittsburgh, I didn't realize that the Penguins were called the Pens. I didn't call them the Gwins. I didn't realize <laughs> that. And so one of the first things I was doing on the air, one of my first... Uh, what are the sh- Gwins doing? One of my first shows, I was reading uh, a thing talking about giveaways. The station was going to be out doing an appearance, and there were going to be giveaways. And it said Pens tickets. And I thought that somebody just missed a comma. And so I said it as... We're going to have pens and tickets. Hmm. And I was like, what the hell did I get myself into with this goddamn radio station giving away pens? Uh, but they were quick to inform me, no, pens short for penguins. Of course, the NHL hockey team and uh, pens tickets, which, of course, a good get. Well, then you have. But you got to know. 
the ones that are out of nowhere, like the Pirates, Pittsburgh Pirates, everybody calls them the Bucks. Buckos, yeah. Buckos, yeah. That's right. Because a Buccaneer is a Pirate. Yeah. Yeah, so they really um, they really throw you a curveball with that. But uh, anyway. I mean, we had that with the Indians, when the, the tribe, everybody called the them the tribe. tribe. Yep. Uh, now everybody calls them the Guardy Boys. <laughs> Is that what they call them? Yeah, it's like so the Hardy Boys, but it's the Guardy Boys. Boys. Yeah, the, I like Guardy Boys. Mm-hmm. I won't lie to you. Just like I mean, Romo Fijo has yeah. caught a flame. Yeah. I, I'm pretty sure for uh, the MAC tournament that they're doing over there, uh, they, they can't stop saying Romo Fijo. God they bless them. It. Yeah, good for them. Well, they should. That's what they're going to be playing. Um, if you are good um, at a lower level of uh, hoops – Let's say, I don't know, mini hoops, right? Uh, We got the last few appearances for the Bud Light March Mini Hoops Challenge. Bill will be out tonight and tomorrow night. I'll be out on Saturday. And this is your shot at the end of all of it, because we're doing the finals on the 23rd. At the end of all of it, whoever's got that highest score. And the dude in the lead right now has got triple digits. Yeah, he's good. He's real good. He's very good. He Uh, could win the whole thing. Whoever wins here in Northeast Ohio uh, goes to Vegas to compete for the grand prize, which is $10,000. So Bill is going to be at the porch in Willoughby tonight from 7 to 9. Uh, He's going to be at the Islander in Middleburg Heights tomorrow night from 7 to 9. And then I will be in Brunswick at a place called Hot Shots on Saturday. That is from 5 to 7. So, uh, you know, maybe come by, grab a little grub. Um, You know, don't put your greasy hands on my balls, though. If you're going to... Yeah, if, wash them. If you're gonna do the uh, the mini hoops uh, challenge, you gotta wash them. And uh, we're getting two qualifiers from each one of these stops, and then they all come out to the finals on the 23rd, and we send one of them. That's in Medina to Vegas that's on tap. Yes, the and finals. I think that's even earlier. Uh, that is two to four. <laughs> Yeah, I'll be hosting well, your the finals. the finals, they, they wanted to make two sure it was to a, four. You know, they knew that there was going to be so many finalists there that they like, we can't just have this well, place run amok with many hoops finalists. Not only that, but it frees up my Saturday night, right? Mm-hmm. And that's fine. I got Everybody's got other things to do. You know, people who came out this last Saturday in Willoughby, you know? I was talking to Ron from Willoughby, and, and oh, he, he I, couldn't be nicer. And Ron's you know. a very nice guy. Yes, and so uh, talking to a whole bunch of people, and I would ask people, what are you doing after this? And some people were like, oh, we just came out to say hi to you. We're going to go home or whatever. But a lot of people were like, ah, well, you know, go do something else. So it, it kind of frees up the rest of your night, and there's nothing wrong with that. So anywho, uh, wherever you want to join us for this, just go to WMMS.com and hit the contest page there. Uh, you can get all the, the details. We talked about this a while ago, or at least kind of the broad strokes of the fact that there are, as of a few years ago, there were only three people in the entire, well, was it the world or the United States? I think there were three people in the world that were still in an iron lung, and one of them has died. Uh, so now, saw this. by my math... Uh, that means that there are only two people left in the iron lung. This is like if you got polio, in, you know, in the 50s. Yeah, but I, I understand he's living, but is he living or is he just existing? Because it looks like you can't move in that thing. Like, it's it, it's just a breathing tube at this point. Well, and if the power goes out, it's a whole thing, and it's, you know. Yeah, but would you rather be dead? Is yeah. Bad, right? You would? Yeah, that. Them being like, a tube boy? Like, like, he his head is just sticking out. I was like, yeah, he's alive, but... That's the equivalent to being on bed rest your entire life. But isn't that your dream? <laughs> yeah, like just to what be are you complaining about? But he doesn't have people are bringing you uh, beverages with straws. You just tilt your head but and I, sip. But he doesn't have use of his arms. He doesn't have use of his. Of what do you his need legs? your arms for? To toss off if you want. Like you can't do any of that stuff. Well, there's holes in the side of this thing. You know they got to give him sponge baths and stuff. So there's. Do that. I don't know. I oh. I want to go in peace. I want to go in peace. He's got like a mirror up above his head so he can see things. Paul Alexander, he called himself Polio Paul. And he spent 70 years in an iron lung. And he died of COVID-19. He just died last week. He was 78. Bro. He made it through all those early waves. Yes. And just got yep. one of these stupid variants. Yeah. 
Oh. Think how, and I'm just <laughs> curious. I'm sure you. I don't know if it's listed in the article, but how much would something like that cost? Was he a, like an experiment where you know they just want to see how it works so they can? Uh, well, no, that was modern. That was regular practice back in the day, so it wasn't really. A, so insurance is not even going to cover this, like now. I'm guessing, right? Oh, yeah, I, I don't know how any of that works. anymore because no. nobody has polio. Right. Okay. Um, but give them time. The megadopes will uh, help bring us uh, polio back uh, by not getting their kids vaccinated. They got a measles outbreak in Florida. Um, yeah, so he contracted polio when he was six wow. in 1952. And he ended up in an iron lung. And he said while he could live outside it for extended periods of time, he re- never really left it. So uh, polio Paul has died. And that leaves. I was trying to find who the other two people were. And I can only find one of them, and I think she's still alive. There's a woman named Martha Lillard in Shawnee, Oklahoma, and she's 76, and she is still in an iron lung. So if that number is still true and she's still alive, uh, Polio Paul was one of the three last people in the world in an iron lung. And um, he died in somewhere in Texas. Here's like advice for me. Don't name your kid Polio Paul. It feels he like did, a bad, yeah, they didn't name him that. They, that it's like a self fulfilling prophecy yeah, if like, you do that. No, no, like, he he called himself. I'm, if I have a kid, I'm not gonna be like, oh, this is our baby AIDS Andy. Like that seems like, like a bad AIDS sign. Andy. Well, <laughs> because somebody obviously somebody's gonna get really mad at that because they're gonna say it should be AIDS Andrew. Oh yeah, no, it, we just went with Andy. Oh. Full name. Well, this guy would post things on TikTok and you know. I live in Dallas, Texas, and I have had an opportunity back in 1952 to get an epidemic of polio to contract that polio. Well, anyway, he's, you know. Uh, that's uh, well, rest in peace. <laughs> yeah, but that's what he's doing his whole life. What do you say to somebody who dies being in an iron lung for seventy years? Because he's been resting in peace his whole life since he was six. So, what do you say to somebody who's died that way? Rest in peace. I don't know. Well, <laughs> maybe <laughs> he finally got out of the yeah. iron lung. He just How wasn't much? there to enjoy it. That's what sucks. How much would it? Are be? they going to bury him in his iron lung? No, well, I don't know. But imagine, and he, I would love to know, and I'm sure there's people who do know, I'm sure this has been well established or whatever, but I'm not doing deep dives in the lives of people with iron lungs. What I'm saying is your muscles obviously would atrophy over that time. So do you think it would be like... Oh, so you're not like pumping iron lung. No. No. You think it'd be like that old Mr. Show sketch where he's got the really <laughs> tiny body? I mean, he was a burn victim yeah. and it was just David Cross's head. I wonder if this guy, if Polio Paul's body was like very thin and small, like no musculature. What do you think? At all Probably because not. of yeah. all the atrophy. Yeah. What? What do you think it smelled like in there? Well, they have to wash his body. I mean, you, it probably Still. didn't smell great, yeah, but, yeah, but I mean, you know, it's not like they sealed him up seven it is years a ago chamber, and never, though, like, never opened it, it up. They took his body out and he just went. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, they, like they, Cheech they and Chong like, opening the doors. I know in their how car. I smell, like, on a hot summer day, just like yeah, just like after I, like a run on, or like a walk. Yeah, but the guy was never moving. I right. mean, it, it he wasn't matter. sweating. Even he wasn't just like balls accumulate <laughs> smell. Oh, like God. it gets. It's been resting in it that happens. Fat. Like, you're not moving your legs or anything. Like it's just there. Mm-hmm. I it, bet it just smells like. I bet no, it, it does, smells like an old folks home. Yeah, I was going to say, I bet it doesn't smell any worse than, like, a grandparent's house. Because he's not moving, so he's not getting sweaty. Old folks don't smell like they used to anyway. We, we were or might just be common once I can't. Yeah. <laughs> Why? Because of all the perfumes and, and uh, emoluments and no, they, emollients? I don't know what they, they just smelled weird when I was a kid, and they yeah. don't smell like that anymore. It, it just It's a very stale smell. We talked about like this. When before. I go to grandma's, it doesn't smell like my grandma's house when I was a kid. Well, there's probably there have probably been great advancements in um, there's been perfumes and there's been uh, air fresheners and yeah. things like that. I, you know, I just also think some of the products they used back then just stuck with them, and then also 
I feel like old people keep themselves up more now than they used to. Well, that, and also back then, there weren't all of these, like, floral scents. It, they were using, like, two or three things, right? It was, like, rose rosewood or something. I don't even know. Yeah. So it was, like, grandma smells. Mm-hmm. And then you would associate that with old people or Ben Gay or whatever. Yeah. So Polio Paul, not his given name, uh, has has passed away. And as of 2018, there were only three people left in iron lungs. So the lady in Oklahoma, if she's still alive, and this guy, lived through a lot, could not live through COVID-19. Uh, William, hello. Hey, Alan, what's going on? I hate the show. How are you? Thanks. Um, I want to tell you, I read the article on that on the BBC, um, and he was out of that iron lung. Uh, quite a bit. He actually learned how to breathe on his own, but he likes staying in the iron lung, according to the article, when he was sleeping or resting at home or whatnot. But he also became a lawyer and, and uh, passed the bar exam and everything. What? Yep. Read the article. Was he? Was he? Try- I guess I didn't go that deep. Was that he- makes me feel like a real piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> was he trying <laughs> cases from inside the mm. iron lung? No, they actually had him in a wheelchair because he was able to breathe, so they took him in the courtroom, I'm assuming. Wow. They didn't so that. the iron lung was really just at night, like just for like his, his resting, not really. Yeah, when he first contracted polio, he was in the iron lung for, I think, like five years or something like that, and then he started to learn how to breathe on his own. Now, he was still paralyzed from the neck down from the polio. Oh, okay. But he, he ended up... Uh, learning somehow how to breathe for short periods of time throughout the day, and then he would actually he actually went and went to college and finished the bar. And wow. Okay. Really so they should have called him Lawyer Paul. <laughs> <laughs> not Polio yeah. Paul. He's not just defined by or the Iron, iron lawyer. lawyer. Yeah, Iron Lawyer. That's bad. Yeah, the Iron Lawyer. Right. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. I Ooh. sleep in a giant Ooh, tank. Have you, you been hurt at work? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, William. I appreciate it. I didn't go that deep in the article. Uh, little mirror. <clears throat> Nothing else in the world except that. You, you, you of course, you, you can't... Uh, your body feels sort of separated from, the, from your head. And uh, <clears throat> you can move your arms and... I can move my feet and Boy, you shouldn't you sure couldn't be claustrophobic. I mean, it's just your body that's uh, contained yeah, that, there, but still. Take that weighted blankets. <laughs> Bring back the iron lung. Okay, so the guy was getting out of it then. It was, yeah. you know, okay. Well, that's a little better than being there the whole time. Went to law school. Wow. I would have been a great lawyer. No. I would. I think You're I would. You're not a paperwork guy. You know, know that's the problem. Paperwork. But, you but have when to you do? have to, when, when you have to present the case, I would have thrived in that moment. Your Honor. If I had somebody else to do all the paperwork for me, including yeah. all the schooling, and they just were like, "Hey, now." Oh, you, you as you, an orator, you, present, you would have yeah. been the guy oh, I see, pleading great. your case. Yeah. And, in summation, mm-hmm. I object. Overrule. Mm-hmm. You don't say that. You're the lawyer. <laughs> Your vacuum can't get in the corners. I hate to tell you, but you bought a real piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, I should clarify when I said my vacuum can't get into corners very well. I have a riding vacuum, so that's why it's a little cumbersome. Mm. That's what threw people off. I, I wasn't clear about that. And that one's a little, it's zero turn, but it's a little hard to get into corners. And boy, was it expensive. And man, does it take up a lot of room. But it really, really does work. And it's really convenient. That guy was a real life Ironside. Well, <laughs> Ironside was in a wheelchair. He wasn't in an iron lung. So was this guy. Yeah, but Ironside wasn't he uh, paralyzed from the waist down? I don't know who Ironside is. So it was Edmund. Uh, it was uh, God, what was his name? Uh, Ed, Ed uh, Raymond Burr was Ironside. He was that was like a seventies uh, TV series where he was a. Uh, Police inspector who had been paralyzed in a shooting incident. Oh. Raymond Burr, mm. Ironside. Yeah, I think when I was little, 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 that was still on. And he was going out and 
and solving crimes. And Quincy Jones did the theme song and the whole. There you go. Remember this from Kill Bill? Yep. <laughs> Uh, isn't this Ironside? Uh, anyway. So he got out of the iron log. I guess that's good then. He got to see a few things, live a little bit of life, go to law school. I wonder how, I, I wonder how they presented him uh, with his JD, with his degree. If they just walked it, they held it up in the mirror, or if he went, they put him in the cap and gown. Well, he's gone. R.I.P. Polio Paul. Not his given name. The Iron Lawyer. And I wonder if that lady in Oklahoma is still alive. She should have had to catch your name, so we didn't just have to keep calling her the lady in Oklahoma. Yeah, that's true. Well, yeah. Alan, is there anyone left in an aqua lung? I mean... <laughs> yeah, maybe. I don't know. Breathing in an aqua lung. Breathing in an iron tube. <laughs> Rolling up to law school. <laughs> I've been here when I was six. Mm. Give me another one, pound cake. Uh, I've been diving in the water. <laughs> The guy's paralyzed from waist down. I don't know. He can, he can't swim. Can you swim when you're paralyzed from the waist down? You can. You can't move anything. I don't know. Arms. What a, a classic joke is. What do you call a paraplegic in the water? Bob. Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Alan, tell Bill old people smell differently because a lot fewer people smoke inside now. Oh. Bring back well. old people smoking inside. Yeah. <laughs> Why but does they, Grandma not smoke? But my grandparents never smoked. Mine didn't either. Yeah, that was not a. It was, wasn't a smoke thing. It was just that the, it was some something they were rubbing on themselves. Something just different. Alan, do you also wonder how it smells when you watch granny porn? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't watch granny who's porn. Gonna, who, who, <laughs> who, I'm not gonna say who watches that. There's some freaks out there that will watch it. Well, don't shame people. Some people have, uh, you know. I said freaks. As in freaky, not freak as I in weird. See. Well, also, some people, they, they go right to it. They go, if, if it, G-I-L-F. If it's anything they, like uh, MILF porn, once you turn the ripe old age of 38, they're like, all right, I guess <laughs> she's a granny now. Uh-huh. My hot stepmom. She's yeah. like 23. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, you're older than her. What are you talking about? I want to know the people that start out, their category is GILF. Like, they... They've been. They started porn when they were a grandmother. Like they haven't been doing it their whole life. They're like, well, I've done everything in my life. I have my grandkids. We talked I about just, that Japanese lady yeah. a while back. She's like the biggest porn star in Japan, and she started when she was like sixty-seven. Oh, that or was, yeah, Remember her? Yeah. She's eighty now, and it all smells like fish. <laughs> well. All right, I got a break. I want to send a text three five one nine two allencoxshow dot com to watch live. My buddy Jim Two is going to be in here shortly. He's doing one show tonight at Hilarities that you should not miss because it's always a treat when he's in town. Um, and I will have those Cleveland Home and Remodeling Expo tickets. You've been hitting me up for those. We'll do those after the break. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our free iHeartRadio app. We got stuff. You want stuff. Win stuff. Win stuff. This week at WMMS.com. Register to win a pair of three-day VIP tickets to the Incarceration Music and Tattoo Festival when it returns to historic Ohio State Reformatory in Mansfield, July 19th, 20th, and 21st. Three stages with three full days of music from bands including Shinedown, Godsmack, Breaking Benjamin, The Offspring, Hailstorm, I Prevail, Chevelle, Sleeping with Sirens, Kill Switch Engage, Seven Dust, and many more. Single-day weekend passes are on sale now starting at $10 down. Register to win and get more info at WMMS.com. Your afternoon drive is brought to you by the Ken Ganley Auto Group, Ohio's number one automotive retailer. Can you believe it? The Farmer's Almanac predicted an apocalyptic winter. As reliable as a magic eight ball. Yeah, well, now we're stuck with all these new high-efficiency systems. Two words, irresistible. 
offer. Yes, that's it. Buy a new high efficiency air conditioner by April 1st. And we'll include the furnace with installation for just $997. Plus no money down financing available. Visit Mitchell'sMagic.com for your free, no obligation exactament. Hurry. Only 19 systems left. And when they're gone. They're gone. Ever wonder what's around the next corner? Past the trees. Into the canyons. Over the mountains. Or through the desert. That's where adventure lives. Take a Nissan SUV and go find it. By texting 64,000, you agree to receive recurring automated marketing messages from Babbel. Message and data rates may apply. No purchase required. Terms apply. Available at babbel.com slash TNC. My new exercise bike. <laughs> More like my $1,500 coat rack. I got a guitar. Never even learned smoke on the water. At Babbel, we get it. Learning something new is hard, especially a new language. I've forgotten all my high school French. My Spanish starts at hola and ends at adios. Make it easy on yourself. Get Babbel, the language learning app built by 200 plus language experts to teach you real world conversations for any situation with research proven lessons, addictive games, immersive podcasts, and live online classes with real teachers. Sounds like fun. It's fun and fast. Babbel's bite-sized lessons take 10 minutes a day. You can start having real conversations in as little as three weeks. Three weeks? Hola, Espanol. Ready to learn a new language? It starts here. Now try Babbel free when you text RADIO to 64000. To try Babbel free, text RADIO to 64000. Text RADIO to 64000. Kia of Bedford's got what you need. A shot to save up to $5,000 off any new Kia in stock. All this month, step up in the line at KOB and sink a shot from the foul line. Save $500. Trade a three-pointer and save $1,500. Make it from half court. Save $3,000. Sink more than one shot and stack your savings for up to five grand on any new Kia in stock. Get your shot to save big. Now through March 31st at Kia of Bedford. Kia of Bedford.com. Ew, gotta get rid of this old Backstreet Boys t-shirt.
magic than ever with new ultra foamy magic eraser. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. This is the buzzard from the Bath Authority Studios. The buzzard. The home of the buzzard. The buzzard. This is 100.7 WMMS. Cleveland. It's time to get stuff away. It's time to get stuff away. All right, the Cleveland Home and Remodeling Expo is next weekend, the 23rd, sorry, the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, out at the IX Center. If you go to WMMS.com, not only do we have tickets there for you, we also have $1,000 to Countryside Furnishings. They do custom pieces out in Middlefield. They will have a booth at the Expo, so you can get a nice big package there. I will have a four-pack of tickets for you right now. Just get you in. And then whatever you do beyond that is up to you. All the info online, tickets, whatever, homeandremodelingexpo.com. If you've got ideas for your house, uh, they'll have some good ones too. Four-pack for you for the Home and Remodeling Expo next weekend. Call 10 216 or 800-348-1007. Fun fact. Celebrity deaths, like testicles, sometimes come in threes. The Alan Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS. Uh, Shoot me a text if you want. 35192. If you listen to us on iHeartRadio, thank you. It ain't always easy. And if you're out of state, I, I want to make sure that I have the uh, map behind me updated. If you listen to the show uh, from somewhere other than Ohio, tell me where that is. Bob listens in West Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, Joy is in Lombard, Illinois. Nick is in Nashville. Jonathan's in Memphis. Natalie listens in Vero Beach, Florida. And Rick is in Mishawaka, Indiana. You ever been to Mishawaka? Sure you been have. stand up there? Yeah. Mishawaka, Indiana. Checked off that bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, of course, birthplace of Fozzie Bear. Waka Waka. <laughs> That's what the sign says before you even get to South Bend. There's a sign. Home of Fozzie Bear. And it caused uh, no small amount of consternation in the town of Mishawaka because, uh, of course, there were people that were complaining. We have to have had some kind of uh, uh, notable person from this town that isn't a puppet. And uh, I don't know what happened with that. Anytime you want to leave us a message, you can. Our after hours line is 216 986 8903. Alan, Trucker John, King of I 71. Bill, now that you're on the mend, when can we expect the new and improved 2024 stairwell fart? Everybody's waiting on it. I know, I know, I know. Pound cake, <laughs> if you go to New Orleans, I will give you $100. Oh, he cut off. He'll give you $100 for what? John, $100 for what? Just for my trip. I appreciate your donation. I'll give you $100. Oh, I thought he was going to have you do No, he's going to have you do something. Oh, John, leave another message. I got to know what the rest of that is. I'll give you $100. And the killer is, click. Yeah, there's a, uh, not to put too, too much pressure on Bill, but I've gotten a lot of uh, questions from people that I simply cannot answer about Bill's I mean, stairwell fart. I'm working on it. I'm trying. I know you are. I'm that's trying. what I. That's all I tell. The thing them. is, farts. I go. Fart, he, he's got his farts own get schedule. farted, and also I'm also like I try to hold them for as long as I can, but sometimes they get out in the hallway, mm. and sometimes I don't even get out of the house. Uh, sometimes I'm not home for it, and then also you can't like hold a fart because if you hold a fart in, your body reabsorbs it, and then it comes out your mouth. <laughs> is that what that is? That's absolute. Fact. A stinky cough. Yeah. Oh. That's- now, how old is that? That's two or three years old by now? Oh, that's five Longer than years that. Old. Five that's, years that's, old, okay. Maybe six. That, and potentially. I think it was 2018. <laughs> maybe and, 2019. And potentially still lingering in the stairwell. No, it's oh, no? dissipated over the They don't the have years, that kind of heft? It's not that, yeah. I'm not going to still be there all, like, five years later. I think that was five years mm-hmm. ago. All right. 
Well, there you go. Alan, my grandma turned 100 yesterday, and she doesn't smell. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Like, you these can't are, these, smell it. This is a new level of old people. But if a hundred, like my grandma was, my great grandma was in her 90s when she passed away in the 90s, and she smelled like an old person. I just love well, that. We're, like we're, an old person. But, old per, but back then, they were also using mothballs a lot more, weren't they? And those, that's what it was. Those smell. Maybe that's what it was. What, what, do you, what is a mothball? Well, really? it's what I, it, I guess that's something you don't really use anymore. No, because it's what you can still buy them. Yeah, but they were little like deodorant balls that you would use to keep maybe that's bugs what it was. away. I think. So, like when you were when you'd have them in your clothing, so that bugs wouldn't like moth wouldn't lay eggs in your clothes. Mm-hmm. So they were like little balls of deodorant. That's also, but they didn't smell awesome because they were chemical. That's why closets are made from cedar. That's right, not oak. Mm-hmm. If you ever seen the movie Overboard, she throws a fit <laughs> with Goldie Hawn and yeah. Kurt Russell. Yeah, she throws a fit because he makes the closet out of oak and not cedar, mm-hmm. and she's like, "It's gonna warp." Well, it's it's that it was going to. Now this is on a yacht, and she's like. It, my all my sweaters are gonna get eaten by moths, and he's like in the Pacific Northwest because it takes place in uh, in I Seattle like or yeah. yeah, it's a uh, somewhere in Oregon. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that anyway, movie, that movie <clears throat> strangely holds up pretty well. Is, Didn't they remake it a couple years ago and nobody cared? Like nobody they, cared because I think it was Anna the, Ferris and I don't remember who the guy. It was, was. Anna Ferris and Eugenio Derbez, and who could forget him? Oh. Yeah. That was the star power. Yeah, the star power. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see that But one. the original Overboard. The original Overboard. When she gets amnesia, she's yeah. all nasty to Kurt Russell. Mm-hmm. And she's making fun of him, and then she falls overboard and gets ah. amnesia, yeah. and he tells everybody that she's his hot wife. Yeah. And they have four kids. Yep. And the kids play along with it very well. <laughs> Uh, and Not one question from those kids. No, those kids are like, all right, we're rolling with this. Yep. We want a new mom. Yeah. And there's actually some really sweet moments in it. Uh, and it's overall, I mean, it's a ridiculous premise, but it's a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. I think it holds up pretty well. And, you know, Kurt Russell, just the best. He's pretty great. That was a Gary Marshall film. He was the late Gary Marshall is who directed that. Of course, he had a... Big old string of hits. But I don't think even when it was out, it did much. It's one of those movies that people kind of look back with some fondness if they've seen it, but I don't think it did much. That was just one that I feel like was on TV all the time. It was on like or, TBS a lot. Or we just had it recorded off of TV and yeah. we would watch it a lot as kids. I just remember watching it as a kid and then not seeing it again until I watched it at the cabin. I was at for my birthday weekend a few weeks ago and – being surprised that it's pretty good. As far as nautical Kurt Russell vehicles go, my wife is very partial to Captain Ron. You ever you seen know Captain what? Ron? I have. Gwen loves I, Captain but again, Ron. It's been since it came out that I've seen it. Yeah. I was a child. Probably worth a revisit. Who is the dad in Captain Ron? Martin Short. Martin Short. Yeah. Okay. And he's we're, all straight laced and he takes yeah. his family to the Caribbean. This was on He's the, the tightly wound yes. one. And Kurt Russell is the easy, he's easy, loose, easy, long-haired. Who plays Cat- the wife? Um, an actress named Mary Kay Place, who was in like The Big Chill and you know did a lot of stuff, eighties, nineties. But yeah, Martin Short was always the nebbishy guy in these movies. He had a good run going. But I mean, Captain Ron was on the shelves when I was managing the blockbuster video, and so I only saw it because it was on. Uh, I, I I grabbed it one night because somebody was like, "Oh, it's actually kind of funny." But my wife has a big boner for Captain. <laughs> for some reason, <laughs> some movies just hit you the right way, and yeah. Captain Ron for her is one of those movies. But oh yeah, Mary Kate Kurt Bush. Russell okay. and Martin Short, and yeah. yeah, and Martin Short's just great. So <clears throat> that rules. Yeah. But uh, again, I, I do don't, like I, him when he's more of a silly role than a than like what they did with him and Steve Martin. In the 90s, we're like, can you guys play uptight? We would like you to be uptight and annoyed by everything. Well, but, like, one of my favorite movies when I was a teenager was Inner Space. 
where Dennis Quaid gets shrunk down and injected into Martin Short's body. Do you remember that movie? I, I Meg Ryan seeing, was I never it, actually it was so saw it. good. I remember I just would loved see it. that movie uh, at the store, but I never. It had all these wild it. practical effects yeah. because people's faces were changing because theoretically. Since he's in someone's body, I don't know how that makes people's faces change, but like he's moving the cells around you or something. Do something. But, yeah, yeah. But inner space, man. When I was a kid because it was like when Dennis Quaid. I think I don't even know if he was married to Meg Ryan yet, but she was just young. Meg Ryan is so crazy hot, super foxy. Love that movie when I was in high school. I just love old movies. Just movies <clears> that have been in like old movies used to mean movies from like the forties and fifties. And now it's from the 80s and 90s. Yeah. I watched Pet Cemetery for the first time ever. Oh, really? The original, the, the original Pet Cemetery. Pet oh, the kid in the truck. Mm-hmm. Yep. Pretty good. Did you like it? I. It's Sometimes great... death is better. Yeah. yeah. That guy's great. Yeah. That old guy's Fred Gwynn. Yeah, he rules. He's Herman Munster. Oh, okay. He's the judge in My yeah. Cousin Vinny. Did you say ute? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. What is a ute? That's him. He, <clears throat> he rules. Yeah. He's the best part of the movie. Uh, and then, and also, it's like why why show him the cat thing if you didn't want him to do the baby thing, <laughs> right? Like, <it> right. Just... <clears throat> no, I've been going back and watching seventies movies. I've been going back even farther than that. I've been because, I've like, done some seventies movies too. Yeah, and a lot of them, a lot of like classic, highly regarded seventies movies. The pacing was so different in the it, 70s. The one we did. Some of them are so slow. I'm like, Jesus. What was I, that Jack Nicholson movie? Five Easy Pieces? Yeah. Holy crap. Where he's working the oil rig. Like, and, yeah. I didn't hate that movie, but the pacing was so slow. Yeah. Turtle slow. A lot of those movies, I'm like, oh, I've never seen this before. I'll watch this. I started watching Mean Streets, the Scorsese movie with, like, Harvey Keitel. It might have been his first movie. I think it was, yeah. Everybody's like, oh, it's his classic that goes back movie. back to the 60s. And I'm like, oh, my God. Some of them I like. Like, All the President's Men, Dynamite. Taxi Driver, Godfather, Chinatown. Fantastic. It's but Chinatown. Some of them. Yeah, I'm like, oof. I haven't seen Chinatown in a long time. That's a good one. Oh, is this trucker John checking in to give me the $100 thing? Mm. John. Trucker John, king of what? <laughs> Hi, 71. <laughs> this is That's right. I love that. What you guys doing? Is this really you? I can't tell. I always hear you on voicemail. No, I'm driving. It's raining. Can you hear the rain? My windshield wiper's running. Oh, that That's not bad. him. <laughs> what were you going to get? I was down in New Orleans and pound cake crapped his pants on the air. A uh, hundred dollars? If he crapped his pants on the air. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. What are you the king of again? You tell me. <laughs> no, you tell us. <laughs> Texas Roadhouse. I love you guys. Uh -huh. All right. Love you too. All right. There's, uh, I don't know who that is. Thank you. Crapped my pants on the air? If you crap your pants on the air. Well, because Trucker John called yeah. and his call, did you hear his yeah, call I, cut I, off? I, yeah. But, but I, if I go to New Orleans, am I going to be, is this for like a show bit or I thought I was just going I, down I there just to go? No, show bit. Everything's show a show bit. Poop your pants. You go down there. Already, you record everything. Right I already pooped my pants <laughs> for a polar blast punishment. That was mm. your pants. That was a toilet. Oh, well, okay. I consider that pooping on air. I, I, it's all. He considers his pants a toilet, Bill. <laughs> he doesn't make a distinction between the two of them. <laughs> Anything's just a toilet if you're uh, lazy enough. Hey, it's already strapped onto my body. Mm -hmm. If I poop my pants, I'm going home. You see J-Lo canceled her Cleveland show? Oh, she did? So J-Lo canceled a bunch of cities because... She probably wasn't selling out. Well, that's the thing, right? <laughs> so they say, like, she very quietly oh, canceled seven cities. Seven cities. Now, the initial report I saw, I didn't see Cleveland in it, and I was kind of surprised because I'm like, there's no way she's selling well in Cleveland. But they say, obviously, it's because of logistical issues and blah, blah, blah. But she canceled Cleveland, Nashville, Raleigh, Atlanta, Tampa, New Orleans, and Houston. So the last two weeks of August. Now, it might be on the up Don't and up. cancel your shows. Go do your half house show. Go do your show for 5,000 people. You still you got money. There's people that want to see you, J-Lo. A logistical issue through the promoter. 
was oh. what the uh, press release said, forcing the cancellations, but they're hoping to work something out. By Logistically, the way, Logistically, you should be in a smaller venue is probably what they're saying. I would always, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How do you feel about the Agora yeah. in Cleveland, Ohio? J-Lo coming to, now yeah. that would sell out. Like, she is a specific artist for a specific type of person. Like, no, again, no one's going to her for her ballads. They want to see her dance and wear nice outfits and her hair blow in the wind. But that's why she can't do a smaller venue. Right. I mean, she's got, there's, I mean, even for your own ego, it's not like she's not going to do the Wolstein Center. I mean, by the way, thank you again, because they've done this a handful of times. Shout out to um, uh, Courtney Shaw, who was a digital uh, editor over there at Channel 5. And when she posted the story, it said, oh, no, J-Lo a no-go at Romo Fijo. <laughs> so thank you. That was a fantastic announcement. That is great. Uh, over on uh, uh, News 5's website from Courtney. I don't know how long she's been there, but I know that um, there's a couple of people. Oh, no, locally. J-Lo a no-go. Oh, no, J-Lo a no-go, no-go at, at Romo Fijo. Fijo. That's, I love that. That's that, journalism back, yep, baby. Everybody was sending me that. That's right. Make them J-School grads shake in their boots with those kind of headlines. Like, she should have never left her residency in Vegas. Like, that was, I feel like that was perfect Yeah, but that's the point. Of, you, you, you have to leave a residency. You're there for a finite amount of time. Well, it's not I open-ended. Mean, but Celine Dion was there for 10 years, and, you know, she— But wasn't it, like, once a month? No, this was like every other night. That's why for I, ten years. Yes. Oh, this was not like she took off. I'm sure like a month at a time for like holidays and stuff. But no, that it was a constant show there for ten years. Same with Britney Spears. She was there. I want to say not five, ten, no. six, yeah. maybe maybe seven years or something like that. And they they have a set schedule. It's just like when you're in Vegas, you could. It's just like Broadway. You can see a Broadway show pretty much at any time. And they pay you a crap ton of money just to stay there. And, people, and you don't have to travel. You can. Yeah, it's just it's just showbiz. You get a house there, or you commute to L.A. Yeah, it's just a showbiz city. Like there, people don't go. People don't necessarily have to see someone singing to be entertained. They can look at all her outfits. They see her hot dancers. Well, it's also a matter of options setup. too, where you go. Ah, everything else is sold out. How about J-Lo? Okay, we'll go see J-Lo. <laughs> right. Like it was, it's it, not going to be a bad show. Yeah. Like, we, when we were there, Adele was supposed to kick off a residency, but it got, like, pushed back. Mm-hmm. But those tickets there, the top dollar, they were, like, $800. Uh, and we were like, well, clearly we're not doing that. So we went to go see um, what, the Jabberwockies. Jabberwockies. Mm-hmm. And that per- great, entertaining show, and it did not cost an arm and a leg. I liked, uh, I saw... Penn Jillette there. It was supposed to be Penn and Teller. Teller was sick. Uh, and then... Uh, you never knew he wasn't there. Yeah. And, and, and but it's it still a great show. It's crazy. I like uh, magic shows. It's crazy to think that there these resorts are just cities within a city. Like, you can go to the resort in Vegas and never leave and be perfectly... And feel like you got the Vegas experience because we were just in one small, like, ballroom within this huge resort. Like, I think they did have, I don't know who was performing at the time, but that Jabberwockies was not their headliner. They had, like, a big star, and we didn't even see that side of the resort. Like, that was, like, a yeah, mile they, away. Yeah, they don't, they, <laughs> if they can keep people from going outside, they will. It's, they keep everything just, in. But then when you have to go from one hotel to the next or whatever, see a show or go to a restaurant or something, you get on that tram, and you walk outside, and it's 115 degrees. Oh You're my like, gosh. oh, my God. We walked, it, it, it was, like, I felt like my shoes were melting because we walked across this bridge. Oh, that's what it was. I was wearing sandals, and I had stubbed my toe on an uneven sidewalk, (laughs) so, like, my nail was coming off, and it was bleeding. And then, so we had to walk to the only CVS that was, like, on the strip. My mom had to wrap my toe real quick, so then my sandal is falling off, and we're walking across to get across the other side of the uh, street on the strip. There is a sky bridge, like a a glass bridge, and it's hot. Like, it is hot. So I was like, oh, yeah, my Yeah, you gosh. can't just cross the street anywhere you want because so, there's those retaining walls. you got to walk yeah. four miles to get to a, an so over. There was no – we had no options. We had to cross the bridge, and my sandals were melting. Like, my sandals were legit – like, it was rubber, and it was turning, like, <laughs> real, real soft. And I'm like, <laughs> uh, we need to get off of this because I'm going to burn my feet. If this is doing it to my leather sandals, I don't know what's going to happen. These things are getting comfier by the minute. Well, it's, <laughs> I guess rubber, not leather, but still. Oh, my God. It was awful. Well, I was driving on my way home last night 
leaving here, uh, went past Romo Fijo, and they had the giant digital billboard there. And it says, Lauren Daigle on her whatever tour. Big. And I go, who the F is Lauren Daigle? Like, even if I don't know someone's music, I kind of have my ear to the ground, and I'll recognize the name at least. I was like, who is Lauren Daigle performing at the Romo Fijo? He doesn't know Lauren Daigle. Christian yeah. artist. You got to check out Lauren Daigle. Big, oh, huge big Christian, Christian artist. artist. Yeah. That's why you like her. You yeah, like that yeah. Christian I, contemporary I Christian. music. I yep. love that music that makes me think I'm about to hear a great song by an artist I love, and then it just ends up being about the Lord. Bait and switch. But I guess she's Got a big. I guess she's Lord. a big deal on those uh, uh, Christian charts. Yeah. So it makes sense she's doing a big venue like that. But I'd never heard of her before. Would you give? <clears throat> hmm. You. What? Imagine you get a deal. You get to be a rock star. Yeah. And you're a Christian rock star. Mm-mm. Want to do it? I can't do it. Why not? Because I wouldn't have a natural enthusiasm for it. I'd be a faker. Paid, I'd be a faker. I, I, I get it. I'd be a faker from the fake jump. It? No. Uh-uh. You could have put it on? No. That crowd like, would call you out in two seconds. I mean, like, I don't think. No. I don't know about You'd be, that. because every bit of scrutiny you'd ever have would be over. You just have to have a very private life. <laughs> yeah. But publicly, you got to be all it. about the Lord. I couldn't do it. Oh. Nope. You could. No, we can't either. I was going <laughs> to say, I didn't. Listen, if I wanted to, when I got into comedy, I was still very adjacent to that Mormon community, and I could have gone that route and probably made a lot of money. Yeah, like doing, a clean Mormon comic, yeah. yeah. Been a clean comic. Even if I wasn't being overtly Mormon, I could still cash in on that. Right, but with that, that you would you wouldn't have to be doing jokes about God. But if you're a Christian music artist, you've right. got to be doing songs about the Lord. I I feel like it'd be easier to do the songs than that cuz Part of the thing, like somebody I else like, writes them for you anyway. Yeah, if somebody else is writing them, I'm just out there, the face of it, just like performing. Or it might even be fun to be like, all right, now what? Now, now what can I get these dummies to buy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you can make some money mm-hmm. and then just say, I, I've just, I've fallen out of the faith. Thank you so much for your support. Or just disappear because you can just be like, all right, well, that was that. Yeah, and there'll be somebody else. Uh, Stepping up. There's always some crumb bum yeah. in public life who finds God, right? Mm-hmm. That's their get out of jail free card. You do the reverse on this. You make a ton of money as a Christian artist, then you go, I've uh, Listen, you'll I've know. seen the light. I'm you'll no longer. You'll know what I have given up when I go become a, like, you know, like guys in this business do where they start doing the right wing talking points. They go, hey, I wasn't making money anywhere else, so I, I went. I got red pilled. Yeah, the sucker born every minute. You see that all the time with comics. So maybe I don't think I'd go red pill, but I could definitely go like, all right, let's let's do this clean, family friendly comedy. Right. Stop talking about what I want to talk about and just. Pan it's got a short shelf out. life, though. I mean, if you're doing something, does it? Yeah, if you're doing something, and because they're always going to be somebody behind you who's doing it. No, because harder so, and I no, mean, I mean, that's if you're trying to be on top. I'm trying to just be in the middle. Make, yeah, just make a good living at it because I there's a guy, I remember him having a Disney Channel comedy special and he was a ventriloquist, and my brother saw him on a cruise a couple of years ago, and it was the same act yeah. that he's been doing since that Disney Channel. It, this is from the eighties. Never had to update it. Never had to update it because he he was like people knew who he was. Enough for him to continue to get booked and like, and do clean, com- family friendly comedy, but he never became a household name or anything. Hmm. I can't remember his name right now. I, I think he had a his mother- Jeff Dunham. No, it was like <laughs> Buffalo Bill was the guy. That uh, was his uh, puppet. I don't know. Willie Tyler and Lester. That that might <laughs> what? No, that was like a um, Willie Tyler and Lester were like. Uh, a black ventriloquist in his like, oh. jive turkey puppet in the 80s, 70s, and 80s. I'm going to take a break here. Uh, Ron Lucas. Ron like, Lucas. Ron Lucas. Wow. He, you don't know him. But he, nope. He's still out there. Oh, good for him. Oh, Ron with two ends. That's what threw me off. Oh, boy. Uh, Jim Twos is doing one show tonight at Hilarities, and it's always fun catching up with him. Give him a reason to sleep on Bill's couch. 
and uh, we'll uh, catch up with him after the break. 35192 on a text to me for anything else. I will have those chili peppers tickets for you after the break, too. This is The Alan Cox Show. Everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app.
Lo John Doe on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. I'm going to go see the Chili Peppers. They are coming back to Northeast Ohio. Red Hot Chili Peppers Unlimited Love 2024 tour with Soon Cootie and Iron Tom in the support slot there. Uh, Monday, July 22nd is the show out at Blossom. LiveNation.com's got the info for you. Uh, tickets here about this time all week for people hitting me up. Second to last pair today for the Chili Peppers. Good luck. Two for you if you are caller 10. 216-578-1007. Or 800 348 1007. Press the yellow button to begin enjoying your Allen. What is an Allen? The Allen Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS. Hey, Jim Twos is back. He's a New York Times best selling author, he's an alumnus of the Allen Cox Show comedy tour. You did like the first or second one, didn't you? Yeah. When we, when we first show. Remember those, Bill? Oh, yeah. Remember the those, comedy tours we used to do? Those oh, fun. those were a good time. <laughs> Meanwhile, we're just out here doing mini hoops <laughs> in lieu of it. <laughs> in lieu of, yeah. Jim Twos is in town to do one show tonight. He's just passing through. He's like a comedy carpetbagger. Well, right? uh, yeah, tonight's the big one. Tonight's mm-hmm. the headlining show at Hilarities. Yep. But I'll be doing a Don't Tell comedy show Friday and then... Shut the... But you can't oh, tell anybody up. about those. Shut up. It's Just very tell... confusing. That's my understanding, is that you're... As the name implies, you they... can't tell anyone. And then they send you a link, and they're like, tell people. Right. And, and you get confused. So did you come in for that and Hilarities? You said, hey, can I, I do... I came in... I, I work backwards. So the other thing I'm doing Sunday is I'm playing with the stepdads of Galway yep. at the Winchester for St. Pat's. I keep meaning to... I have missed those guys every single time they've played. Who is it? Is it you and McBride and Polk? And Polk Burge? and Matt Zatelli, I think. Yeah, okay. I don't know if James Burge will be there. It's a rotating it's... cast of characters. Joe Briggs? Yeah, Joe we Briggs. We just had him on the show? It's a huge mass of... Yeah, people who can Talent. barely play instruments, oh. um, myself included. Now you learned the fiddle for this. This year I'm playing the fiddle. What time is this show? Because <laughs> Polk's got six, his own thing going. Six o'clock. Anyway, right? Doesn't he have like a big party yeah, at St. Pat's? Brunch and then yeah. we go over there at uh, six p.m. and six p.m. Keep going. Maybe but I'll, I, maybe I'll finally catch you guys. You this should. Time. Yeah. You learned to play the fiddle. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, we'll see. Yeah. I, I heard him playing it. He was playing at my place <laughs> earlier today, and. Uh, you guys are in for a treat, but also <laughs> go see Jim tonight at Hilarities, though, because yeah, let's the focus. That's yeah, we're all over the place. The what you're doing with your stand up and the slideshows that you're doing. Have you seen any of these, Alan? I have not. Okay, no. They're, they're I know. You, I know you're quite so an accomplished funny. animator, but I didn't know how you had how you had um, infused that into your act. Well, I'm. I got bored, and then I was like, well, I know how to draw. Why am I not drawing more mm-hmm. in my stand up? I'm and you know, in a lot of ways. Like ticket sales, I'm not drawing a crowd, <laughs> right? And I'm not using my drawing ability. Your God-given gift, right? Yeah. Um, and so many places have uh, slideshow setups, or you know, like a screen now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And we're all used to like looking and listening at at different things. So I I started. Uh, you know, they call that multimedia entertainment, Jim. I mean, I was born for it. That's what I'm saying. And it's great. It's like, <laughs> I know you're like being a little, but it's so funny and it's simplistic and it doesn't, like it's not over the top and it like things, it's it's just really, really good. And but it's I something that, it's something that. Enough, you should go see Jim tonight. It's something that supplements the act or it's something that you've built the act around. Mm-hmm. It's is it like a TED talk, it's but mostly, with jokes. It's mostly uh, supplemental. <laughs> yeah, because I'll I'll be the first to tell you my stage presence is not as engaging as I would like it to be, and I've found but that. Didn't you have an album called Oatmeal? I did. <laughs> um, now to what that was referring, I don't know. But it could, uh, you whatever, know. yeah, it could be. You know, it can be anything. Plain, yeah. things. Mm-hmm. Um, plain but nutritious. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I just I just started not the way um, I do it. <laughs> <laughs> I just started adding uh, adding some visuals behind me, you know, like hand drawn stuff, and then anything anything I write that it was like, oh, this would be better if because you know I could give with me, a visual yeah give give the crowd a little something extra little yeah. little oomph yeah so that's what I now have now. you have you seen um, 
have you seen a greater reaction from people since uh, kind of incorporating that? Yeah. Or is it, it still in its infancy? No, I've, I've, you know, the first time I did it was this time last year at Hilarities. Okay. Because I know they, they're they nice enough to give me enough leeway yeah. to be like, try well, it out here. Yeah, you could do yeah. something weird for a little bit for one night. Um, and I tried it and I was like, oh, that was fun and it worked. And then I found more places in New York to do it. I did it. I've done it on the road a few times, and then I just keep modifying it. And then bits that I work on, I start with the joke. So when I do shows in New York, and the jokes will always land just by themselves. The jokes will always. The, that's the that's my rule. Yeah. The this is just to, icing on a cake that's already been baked. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's like a it's like a tag. You yeah. Know? You'd add a tag to a joke, but this time I'm doing it with the click of a button, and then the tag is visual, basically. I'll tell you what kind of threw me off, and this is an administrative uh, complaint, but I went to the Hilarities website. <clears throat> Jim Twos is doing a 7 o'clock show there tonight, and you can buy tickets right there. You could just get them at the door as well. I'll just read you what they have on, on the website. Hilarities 4th Street Theater features seven weekly shows, and the faces you've seen on stage range from hometown Cleveland favorites like Mike Polk mm -hmm. to faces you've seen everywhere like Dusty Slay, David Tell, Roy Wood Jr., Dan Cummins, Tom Pop, right? They give one, Mike Polk, one Cleveland favorite. Why doesn't it say Bill Squire, Mike Polk, Jim Twos, right? Cleveland favorites like one guy and then yeah. a whole bunch no, of other people. Mike's kind of a and, different level. Well, the level. important thing is that <clears throat> they've named only men. That's the important thing. <laughs> I uh, saw you're doing a show back at home with my friend Felicia Gillespie. Yeah. Oh, you know Felicia. We go way back. Fel yeah, Felicia. yeah. She, Felicia. I, yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah. I did. A, I, she did a bit about uh, pronouncing her name wrong. Yeah. And then I went up after and I was like, Felicia, I'm sorry. I've known you for 15 years and I've been saying your name wrong. Yeah, we go way back. She's so funny. I, she's fantastic. She was out of it for a minute, and I don't even think that I I haven't talked to her in a minute, but I didn't even think, I didn't even know she was doing that. I was on your Instagram and I was kind of yeah. looking at what else was going on, and she was on a, some show you're doing on Sunday. Yeah, we do. I, I for do our a, Brooklyn listeners, yeah. it's gonna be a Blinkies. Well, we had yeah. uh, we had Mary on at. Bl I do a weekly show at a bar called Blinkies in Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Yep. with uh, Cleveland's own Joe Briggs, and um, Parma's Parma's own Parma's Joe, own Joe Briggs, Sorry. and he can't wait to come back. Is what he yeah. told me. He's coming back tomorrow. He's coming back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for good. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Uh, back for I, good. Yeah, he's a. Uh, he's, he's doing, he's doing good. good things yeah. out there, though. He's doing. He's good. getting it figured out. Um, My sweet baby boy. <laughs> but but Mary, we had Mary on the show, and Mary brought brought people. Yeah, people came to see Mary. Mm -hmm. They were Clevelanders that were in town to see something else. Yeah, came to see Mary. So you know, we oh. also got the bar to to, to uh, get Great Lakes on tap. Mm -hmm. That's so, great. That's fun. Yeah. Did you have to start like a formal protest uh, for that, or no, was I'm, there? A... I'm friends with the owner, <laughs> and they. they got, oh, so it was pretty simple. Yeah, they they just started serving Christmas sale. Uh, at the end of last year mm -hmm. in in the five boroughs because they didn't before and i was just like hey can you get this a keg of this stuff and i'm like I'm, i guarantee it's gonna move fast and then i think you can still get it and it's the same keg from december <laughs> i was gonna uh, say they didn't all have the same fans <laughs> no, like because because when we started drinking christmas ale it was <laughs> like the only Christmas beer. Right. Yeah, now was there's a, a million. Yeah. Well, that was my question. They didn't have any kind of analog for that in Brooklyn already? Yeah, they d I mean, all But the, you said, hey, like, try brewery. this. Yeah, like, you know, like, yeah, this will like, sell. Yeah, because I wanted it, because it was selfishly, I wanted it yeah. uh, on tap. Yeah. And I, you know, I probably had like six of them. <laughs> uh, over the course of two months. When did we, me and you got real but, drunk on Christmas Hill. I think not last it's not year, hard to the, do. Yeah, but like the year before. Oh, when I, I probably came through. I think I came through uh, before Christmas. Yeah, and we, we ended up getting some. Yeah, yeah. It's real easy to. It's that stuff goes down pretty. Easy. So they have Bill. Are you? Are, <laughs> is the is the implication that they have changed it over the years, or is it no? Still I'm just saying there's close. so many options now. I see what you mean. Okay, and craft like I'm talking like when craft beer was in its infancy yeah. of being. A thing. I mean, Christmas. I'm talking 15, 20 years. When you guys wrote yeah. the song, you and yeah. Polk had a great song about it. It was the only Christmas ale there was, and now there's a whole bunch of variations of winter beers and Christmas and like yeah, the, like uh, there were a few other ones, but 
Cleveland really got We've behind that We've done our MMS one back day. winter yeah. beer. Yeah, know? exactly. Yeah. MMS winter yeah. brew, and yeah, that's pretty good too. And and a lot of I feel like a lot of people just stop drinking, mm-hmm. <laughs> like in the last two years. Yeah. So you're like, hey, try this really dark nine percent beer <laughs> that tastes like a gingerbread pine cone. Mm. Are like, you still oh, married? One now. Yeah. 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 I, don't know, I haven't seen you for a while. I mean, you know, it was, it's been a year. I was gonna say, I know you like just got married, but yeah. you know, life can be hard, man. Uh, but, no, I mean, know. it's been a year since we've seen each other. Yeah. But I, I've been married for two years. Yeah, almost three. But yeah, I'm like no, yeah. still married. Yeah, I'm still hungover from your wedding. And so, <laughs> and, and so, other than doing these, uh, incor- incorporating the 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 drawings and things, how are things going otherwise there for you? Are you, are you, you know, you had the cat book a while back. Yeah. That's what made you a New York Times bestselling author. It was Proof. Felines of New York. Was that what it was called? Yeah. Yeah. That's what proved all my English teachers wrong. Right. Um, it yeah, was a no, big F you to the people who said, you'll never get this cat book done. Yeah. They said, you'll never <laughs> start a blog that turns into a viral sensation. And that's right. Then get a publishing deal. Yeah. Or you'll never write a book that's half pictures. That's right. That was before people even knew what a viral sensation was. Yep. You showed them. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, it's going good. And I started, you know, I've been doing animated stuff for the last couple of years. And now during the day, I work at an animation studio. Okay. Working on a kid's show. And then I do my shows at night. Is it a show we know? I can't. I signed an NDA. But oh, you can't talk about the show that you work on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> but it, it, you, 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 your kids probably watched the mm-hmm. first iteration. Mm-hmm. Of it, but it's coming. Does it rhyme with Bluey? Bluey? It does not. <laughs> All right. Oh, it's something that's coming back. <clears throat> it's a show that's coming back. It's, You're already saying too much. It. Does yeah, it yeah, rhyme with Snug Rats? No, no, no. Oh, okay. Um, that's interesting, though. They say, hey, you can't talk about what, is it because the show isn't on yet? Yes. Oh, they oh I see. Uh-huh. They are getting ready to relaunch yeah. something. Oh, okay. Yeah, and yeah. that's a good gig? Or you, that's a yeah. fun thing, you know. Yeah, they let me. I go, uh, <clears throat> hey, I'm going to go to Cleveland on Thursday for a couple of days, and they just go, all right, make sure you get all the. Because you can work on stuff on drawings. the road probably, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, last time, well, not last time, but a couple of years ago, Jim and I did some road gigs together, and we had an Airbnb, and we got drunk one night and watched a movie <laughs> on Netflix in the Airbnb and we cannot remember what it was and it wasn't either of our Netflix accounts it was like whatever was already signed yeah. into the TV so there was no way to go back and try and like track it down <laughs> and and but and it's it, like bothers us to this day it was a movie we had both seen cuz we were both just like oh let's watch this we haven't watched this in yeah. a while yeah. and then we were like yeah and then we watched it and like we were truly engaged throughout the whole movie, like talking about it, making jokes, like mm-hmm. whatever. And then like, oh, glad, so glad we watched that movie. And like, woke up the next morning, and we're like, it was, like what, yeah, it went away we, that was, fast. We're like, what movie did what movie we watch? <laughs> we weren't like, we also had like, we had, and like, you didn't, oh, and you didn't know where to go. To, you didn't yeah. know where to go to find it. No, like, yeah, like we you, were, once we were out of the Airbnb, yeah. it was like in their watch history. Yeah, I'm like, so right. We couldn't bring it back we, up. No. And I'm like scrolling through my own thing. And you know, when you get on somebody else's Netflix, it's like a whole different algorithm that's yeah, got all these different, different world like, perspectives. I didn't even know these movies were on Netflix. Right. Could you have it makes me crazy emailed me. them and said, hey, this is going to sound weird? Yeah. Could you check your watch history and tell me what I watched last night? I, I, that would have been great. I wish I would have thought of that because yeah. I think the Airbnb host probably would have been down for it. Now, yeah. how long ago was this? This like, was in 2022. Email them yeah. tomorrow. Yeah. Email them. 23. Email them tomorrow. No, it wasn't. It was 2022. Last, yeah, it was 2022. You're right. Because yeah. last, yeah, it's 2022. Okay. Yeah. Email Go, them hey, tomorrow. You might not remember me, but three years ago, yeah. two years ago, I yeah, watch something far, on your Netflix. How far back can you I think you it go changes all the time. People are asking me if Joe List is still trying to bang you. Oh, yeah, he is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would assume that that answer is, that, is that's yes. That's a reference from a podcast from many years ago. Is that just to give you herpes? What's that? Is he just trying to give you her, herpes? Oh, or? it's a, yeah. I remember last time you were here, you had gotten into some scrum with Amazing Jonathan's wife. I did. Yeah. That was a couple years ago. That Was, was that before he died or after yeah, he, died. he died? It was before he died. Because yeah. I was a huge fan of his. Yeah. But she didn't take kindly to some comment you had made. No, because I did it. It was a, a big I misunderstanding. Did a, I did a thing in, in uh, at um, uh, 
knitting factory. Sh- trick or treat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah trick or treat. You dress up like you dress yeah. up as other comics. Yep. And um, I did Amazing Jonathan, and I was uh, the whole time I did these like like fake tricks that I made up. Yeah. And the whole time, a guy in a um, uh, Grim Reaper costume was behind me, and that was kind of the joke. Yep. And she thought you were and mocking the whole. She thought thing. I was ripping off his act. Yeah. And started Facebook messaging me. Oh yeah, that's what it was. And then I tried to explain to her, that, no, this is like a bit show. Did you ever reach a detente with her, or did it just? It just ended. It just ended. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, his, I, I, his, wish was, I wish it was a more climactic his, ending. No, it's that. okay. <laughs> his death uh, probably uh, re, uh, worked her priorities, too. She probably yeah, had le- so. a less time to mess yeah. around with you. Yeah, I mean, I could go on the road. It's amazing, Jonathan, too, but mm-hmm. we'll see. Pound cake, did, I, I, I'm, uh, did you get a boner when Jim said he had to sign an NDA for his job? That he had to what for his job? <laughs> He had to sign an NDA listening. for his job. <laughs> no, but I knew that you would make a reference to me on that. <laughs> well, because, I'm just asking. Because I, you, you make it seem like it's not common, and I'm telling you. No, I didn't say that it's not common. I think it's uncommon for the situations that you attach you, them to. You but say people break them all the time. I'm like. They do. I just tried to get Jim to break his and tell <laughs> and me he what did. he's worked. And he didn't. That was a test, and he passed. Mm-hmm. Good for you. Jim Twos is in town tonight to perform for you. And it'll be a show unlike any you've ever seen. Who's with you, or is it just you? You go right into Jim Two's. No, we don't do that. Yeah. Um, who is it? Mike I know if you need it all and... the time for them. No, no, no. I, I still anybody anyone's ever heard of? I mean, if you live here, you've heard of them. Who are they? Mike Strank and uh, Dave Flynn, I think. Yeah, I've heard of Dave. Yeah. Strank just did that show with me out in Lorraine last week. He's a very funny dude. All right. And Dave Flynn is one of the funniest people around He's uh so well good. i don't can they not be for a minute <laughs> yeah sorry buddy you're gonna have to work tonight go good thing you got your pictures uh, yeah. yeah good thing i got props. your pictures yeah. i'm gonna take uh, my fiddle up there uh-huh a little a little musical interlude before yeah, uh, yeah well maybe i'll get out to that galway show on sunday it'll be on my to-do list it's, hopefully yeah. i'll see you guys see you do your fiddling <laughs> it's gonna be bad yeah that's what i'm counting on well it's good to see you dude you too man yeah thanks for coming in thank you um, Jim Twos is at Hilarities tonight. It is 7 o'clock. You can go to pickwickandfrolic.com for the details or just walk right around the corner and go buy yourself a ticket. And uh, jimtoos.com, right? People, you yeah, still got a website know, and all that? People want to know, is Jim Twos Asian or just stoned? Neither. What is this? Why are those the only two <laughs> yeah, choices, but- <laughs> bud? Is he Asian or stoned? Hmm. Nope, well, just, just has. does he look Asian or eyes. stoned? Apparently, I do. Wow, congratulations. I'm looking right down the, the lens right now. Man, mm-hmm. yeah. You figure it out. Yep. All right, I'm going to break here. Uh, if you want to send a text, 35192 for something, alancockshow.com for everything else. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our free iHeartRadio app. Rover's Morning Glory. A lot of people don't know this, but the state of New York, there's actually a law in the books that makes it illegal to commit adultery. Crystal, would you be in jail as an adulterer? You must have had sex with some guys throughout your marriage. And gals. And women. Well, yeah, yeah that would oh, count oh. too, right? Yeah, right. You're a serial offender. You have to get multiple years. Would you get a year for every person had sex well, it's with? Well, 90 you days. Know? 90 days. Okay. You'd so have a your life case, yeah, bad. you'd probably... <laughs> Rover's Morning Glory. Weekdays on 100.7 WMMS and 24-7 on our free iHeartRadio app. Your afternoon drive is brought to you by the Ken Ganley Auto Group, Ohio's number one automotive retailer. Ohio's career technical education program isn't just about learning a trade. If college is the path your child wants to take, career tech can help. They will learn invaluable leadership skills, gain hands-on experience, and earn college credit to propel them into their future. So whether they want to jump straight into the workforce or move on to higher education, Ohio's career technical education program will help them every step of the way. Visit education.ohio.gov slash career tech to find out how you and your child can shape your future your way. Hey, baseball fans, step up to the plate for the Spectrum Back to Baseball Sweepstakes. Go to a participating Spectrum store and enter for your chance to win our all-star prize, a 50-inch smart TV, hundreds of winners selected. Hustle, sweepstakes ends March 17th. Enter for your chance to win. For more information and official rules, go to spectrum.com slash 2024 TV sweeps. No purchase necessary.
complete with flights and hotels. All thanks to Live Nation. You can see Incubus VIP in New York City. Damn, that's huge. How do I win? Oh, that's right. I'll be there. I'll be For your chance to win, just listen to this station on the free iHeartRadio app. This is The Buzzard. From the Bath Authority Studios. The Buzzard. The home of The Buzzard. The buzzard. This is 100.7 WMMS. Cleveland. Hello. We're glad you're here. If you need assistance or just have a question, our associates will be glad to help you anytime. Call the Alan Cox Show. 216-578-1007 or 1-800-348-1007. 35192. Want to send me a text? You can watch live if you like at alancoxshow.com. Uh, Cavaliers are uh, coming off a win in New Orleans, 116-95 to last night. Nothing tonight from them or tomorrow night. They will be back in Houston to play the Rockets. That's a 5 o'clock start on Saturday afternoon. Cavs-Rockets, 4.30 is when your pregame coverage begins here on MMS. Earth, wind, and fire from 1981. Let's crew. It's from an album called Ray's. Great, great, great. Earth, Wind, and Fire. I think Ralph Johnson on the drums. This is one of the albums that my mom, when I started playing the drums, my mom, who had been a drummer, handed me a stack of albums and said, listen to these. And so it was like Van Halen 1 and all over the place. And Earth, Wind, and Fire Rays was in that uh, stack. It remains one of my favorite albums of all time. Pound Cake's mom likes it. I bet your mom and I would get on, uh, get on pretty well with the earth, wind, and fire, don't you think? I think so, yeah. I think you guys have, well, besides the metal, you have similar music tastes. Mm-hmm. She like Warren Zevon? I don't think so. I don't know. <laughs> All right, well. <clears throat> you, do you care if I give her a call? Go ahead. I'm going to play this when I call. I think you're really groovy, Teresa. <laughs> Right. Are you a jive like, turkey? Oh, what's this? Mom, nobody wants to see that. We'll get to six. <laughs> Are you a jive turkey? What does that mean again? I know it means. Well, jive just meant like fake or lame or, you know, so. Whack. Man, you jive. Yeah. yeah. And, and turkey was just kind of like a throwaway. Like a jerk. Man, you a yeah. jive turkey. Yeah. Like, I think like it came dork, from dork, yeah, jazz dork, musicians yeah. and stuff. So, so If something stunk or was lame or it was jive. It says a jive turkey is someone who is unreliable, makes exaggerations or empty promises. Ooh, or pound who cake's is, a jive turkey. Or who is otherwise <laughs> dishonest. Uh, see, I don't think pound cake's dishonest. I think, he's, I think he's honest to a fault. Right? Yeah. He's, he's very honest. All right. I'll give him, I'll give him that. <clears throat> Ohio Players had a, a song on Skin Tight called Jive Turkey. Jive Turkey. I love it. You Somebody should bring sassy. that back. Get your hands off me, Jive Turkey. Yeah, we got to bring back Jive Turkey. Like um, WKRP in Cincinnati, right? Venus Flytrap. They do Jive Turkey. <laughs> Hey man, is that your old lady? No. Yeah, I mean, ladies can be jive turkeys, too. Sure it's can. not just guys. I can't wait for, like, 20 years where all our TikTok lingo, you know, falls out of favor and no one uses it anymore. Like 20 bussing. years? More like three. But I'm just saying, like, bussing is still a thing. People aren't, aren't going to believe they're that we use bussing. They're only going to say it throwback, like, I don't know what we used to say, bussing. Or, like, thought, <laughs> like, they were like, why didn't you just call her a whore or, like, a... Uh, <laughs> Oh, I mean, whore is a very aggressive word. But I'm glad that is, uh, I'm glad that there are so many different 
synonyms of yes it, yeah. for whore. Like we we used to, instead of thought before thought was a thing we used to say bop. You're bopping around or like a chicken head. A chicken head. Thotting is, and bopping. Yeah, but chicken head go, that that's been around that's for a long time. That's very old. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you're like your chicken head or your bop. I, I remember I got in trouble in school for calling somebody a chicken head. She's like, "Do you?" The, the female teacher just put her hands on her hips. She said, "Do you know what that means?" I said, "Yeah," and I told her. And again, me being too honest, you know, be, being in seventh grade or eighth grade, I was like, "It means blah blah blah." And she was. Like, <laughs> She'd be signing documents. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and she was just head like, bobbing like a chicken. She's like, I'm gonna call your mother. I was like, Well, she's asleep right now. I was like, I was like, she's asleep. I was like, that's how I got time to learn the lingo. Well, and irrespective of what generation you are, if you're not careful, slang will trip you up. If you're using slang that is above your pay grade, like something you maybe heard an adult say, mm-hmm. and then you repeat it, and they're like, excuse me? And you just think you're throwing some funny word out. Um, well, I remember calling my sister a whore, <laughs> and I was just shortening oh, horror. Like, that's something that I was What? Doing. You that's were shortening what I, horror, Bill? I swear, I didn't know <laughs> what it meant. You're such a whore. Horror. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's... I... How I, did you arrive at that? Why would well, you? I had why heard, would anybody call someone a horror? Well, I had heard other people say horror, and I thought it was a short term for horror, uh, like your like horrible horror. You weren't You're shortening it. You thought around. that's what it was. But I, so I, like, we were in the car, and I go. Beth, you're a, such a whore, Whoa. and my mom's like, <laughs> "What?" And I'm like, "She's like a horror. She's oh, a I horror to be around." And my mom's like, "Is that real?" I'm like, "I." Thought that's what, it, and, I, and the genuine confusion. It was on your face. It was on she my knew face, you were, and my yeah. mom's like, "Okay, well, <sighs> don't say that." And I was like, uh, "Okay, don't call your sister a whore." Mm-hmm. I remember the first time I learned. Uh, I don't know if I can say this on air, but it, it's the Q word of what a woman does. Can I say that? The Q- queef. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to dance around it, but uh, now well, that, that we know what you're talking yeah, about, yeah, and I remember I learned it. Uh, from another person, and I thought it was a joke. I was like, they- also, if there's any volunteers to do a stairwell, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm tired of the guys sending yeah. them to me. Yeah, those are unsolicited, by the way. Let's get it going, ladies. Come on. I, th- I thought it was a rumor, I, th- I didn't know that girls could really do that. I was like, no one you know, farts out of there, and they're like, yes, you do. Yeah. Well, yeah. it can have, I mean, again, yes, it's, it's it is a d- yes, it is a different situation, it's but. Not- <laughs> Yeah, For all intents and purposes, it's not what you think it is, but like it's just. I knew girls that could just do it. They could, they could just they, on command. Yeah, they would suck in and then shoot it out and, <laughs> and they make the noise. But it's like a sixth grader learning that we're not going that much in depth. It's oh just, no, it was so, just the best insult ever. Yeah, someone heard it and then one told everybody else. And then you're like, oh, Jessica Queen. <laughs> <laughs> I got in trouble. <laughs> Because I just parodied everything I heard from Friends or South Park. South Park was not a good influence on me at all. But Well, no. You were like in kindergarten remember, when that show was on. I remember I mean, learning douchebag in school, and that was just... And we weren't even calling guy like, you're a douchebag. We were just... We heard what it was, and we're like, douchebag. Like, we were just daring each other to say it, <laughs> like, in class or, like, in the line when we are getting ready to go in. Say it. Say what? Say, say DB. Like okay. Say DB. Yeah, and then like wait for the teacher walk in and go douchebag. Decimal. Oh, that's not what you meant. <laughs> oh, words were so fun back then. Words are always fun. I know, it was but they were especially to learn fun because you had new ones. I was like, no, that's not a real thing. They don't really do that out of there. But the worst was though when. There was a new word that you didn't know what it was, and all the other kids knew what it was, so you just had to pretend like you knew what it was. You're like, I can't fucking know what that is. You're like, Bill doesn't even know what a douchebag is. I'm like, I know what a douchebag is. Of course I know what a douchebag is. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, what is it? I'm like, I, you guys, you tell me. Mm-hmm. You, you're the one that doesn't know. You know. All that posturing to try and act like, and I'm, douchebag was not the word that I'm thinking of, but it was definitely a, a word that I remember not knowing what it was and being very, uh, like, having to go to my older brother and be like, what is this word? And it was the C word. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. 
What is this word, and why can't I call her sister a whore anymore? <laughs> <laughs> Mom like, just told me not to do it. Up it. Another, yeah, he's, he's like, don't call her a whore, call her a C. <laughs> she didn't explain why I couldn't call her that. Get rid of the C word. You know who Kyle Brandt is? No. Uh, Kyle Brandt is a guy. He's kind of had an interesting career. I, I think he must have grown up a rich kid because he grew up in a very wealthy suburb of Chicago called Hinsdale. Um, but he's he's been um, he was a soap opera actor. Ooh, he's hot. Mid forties, uh, because he's from Chicago. He was on the Real World Chicago, but he played football for Princeton, and now he does stuff. I think for the NFL Network. So oh, he's, okay, yeah, I've seen. This he's too. had an interesting career. Like he's a good looking dude, and he's you know. But he was talking about the Steelers. You know, they just grabbed Russell Wilson, mm-hmm. and he had to flame Cleveland over it. He doesn't have any allegiance to the Steelers, I don't think. He was talking about how, well, I'll play for you. This is an awful time for Steelers football. They haven't won a playoff game in seven years. That is way beneath the standard there. The We got to the playoffs last year and lost in the wild card round. Guys, that's that's Brown stuff. That's Bengals stuff. <laughs> He's saying uh, excuse the me, Steelers the Browns, are the Browns a dynasty. Won a playoff game in 2021. <laughs> And they beat the Steelers, so yeah. uh, it's actually Steelers stuff, buddy. Yeah. Why's he got to do that? And the, the Bengals stuff. The Bengals got to the Super Bowl like three years ago. And it lose Steelers stuff. The Steelers are the, on the downside right now, and Russell Wilson ain't going to help them. Well, uh, I wish uh, Joe Flacco was coming. I back. saw Joe Flacco was going to the Baltimore Colts. Don't, no, no, no. <laughs> What? No, he played for the Baltimore Ravens, and now he's on the Indianapolis Colts. They went to Indianapolis? When did this happen? Show. Is he replacing Johnny Unitas? <laughs> Peyton Manning? You saw Brian Bob Hoyer Greasy, got cut. Oh, did he finally? Yeah, Brian Hoyer, a North Olmstead's own, I think. Isn't he from North Olmstead? Yes. Brian mm-hmm. Hoyer played one season for the Raiders in Vegas, and they cut him. But, yeah, the, the Flacco thing, I, it feels like a real bummer because he's like – Wanted to stay here. It seemed like, right? He was like oh, going was, out he, and like talking to people like, at hey. Target and stuff. He's like, this is the place. Where, if if this is where I'm gonna, be, yeah, I would, I would love that to be my first priority. But it seems like a certain player didn't want Joe Flacco in his head. Jameis Winston or the other guy? The other guy, uh, Deshaun Watson. Yeah, didn't mm. he didn't want because nobody's gonna be clamoring for Jameis Winston. But if Deshaun Watson messed up. Everybody like, gotta get Flacco back in there. This didn't happen when Flacco was in there. Yeah. So, well, anyway, yeah. It, I think it's a real bummer because I think people in Cleveland really we loved it. Yeah, really warmed up to Joe Flacco, mm-hmm. and um, it, by for all by all accounts, it sounded like he would have very much liked. I mean, to the have fact stuck that around, but. he had that terrible mm-hmm. of a playoff game, and people are still like, we should have brought him back. Yeah, just goes to show you how beloved he was in that short period of time. So, in Indianapolis, Anthony Richardson is the guy that they're still kind of trying to feel yeah, him out well, a little bit. Well, so he, he gets, only got to play a few games, yeah, and then he got injured for the season, so they don't really know what they have in him yet. But you want a good quality backup quarterback, and uh, Joe Flacco is that. So, Flacco, he's got one year. They're paying him almost $9 million. Half of it's guaranteed. Mm-hmm. Like, good for you, dude. Oh, but, the, the whole, the, but the, the whole, whole quarterback situation in the NFL is crazy with, I mean – the Bears, your team, yeah. going to be p- picking number one, so they're yeah. probably going to trade Justin Fields, but they yeah. got to wait until somebody makes them an offer that they feel like is worth it. Uh, Kirk Cousins going to Atlanta. <clears throat> yeah. Sam Darnold going to Minnesota. Like, there, there's uh, Russell Wilson. That that whole thing's crazy. Just Russell Wilson. Do you know this story, Pound Cake? How much guaranteed money? Isn't it like over a hundred million dollars? Well, it was. Wait for who? For for Russell, for Wilson. Russell Wilson, eighty-five million dollars in uh, like the the Broncos ha- have to pay him. Oh that, yeah, yeah. And he's never gonna. And that contract, the the interesting thing about that, that was his re-signing contract. So every down he played for the Broncos was on his contract that he had with the Seahawks. <laughs> right. And then he signed an extension <laughs> when he got to the Broncos, and they cut him before they even. Got a chance for him to play and make any money from that contract. It's double. Yeah, he lost like $39 million. Yeah. Well, he didn't. 
I thought he did. No, I thought he, them cutting him when they did, they they that cost him like thirty nine million dollars. No, I don't think. I uh. think he still gets. Oh, okay. No, good for him. Well, I mean, maybe maybe an incentives, but he's still getting eighty five guaranteed. Uh, and he's still married to Sierra Ponce. Still, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But he also hit that eighty five million dollar cap hit is more than the other two highest. <laughs> Cap hits against a team combined. <laughs> yeah. It's so much money. And he's that great of a player that they're okay with paying that? No, they no, wanted him to be. They wanted him to be that great of a player. Yeah. And then it didn't work out. He and Pete Carroll had a really good thing going in Seattle. And, <laughs> and he's, he he's, just didn't and duplicate honestly, it. He wasn't terrible last season. Right. They benched him halfway through the season because they wanted to go in a different direction. But he had an okay – he had like 26 touchdowns and eight interceptions and – was looking more like the Russell Wilson we saw in Seattle that first season in Denver was terrible. Uh, but it's – I don't – I mean, he's an upgrade over Kenny Pickett. I didn't know he was from Ohio. Who is? Uh, Russell Wilson. Is he? Cincinnati, uh, Ohio, it says. Oh. He's an Ohioan. Everyone's always an Ohioan somehow. Are somewhere. they? If, some, if you go back far enough. Cincinnati. Yeah, my Bears will probably grab Caleb Williams. I mean, I think all the signs yeah, are pointing that because yeah. he'll go first. And, and so then you got to <clears> see <throat> where Justin – Fields is going to end up. And that's interesting. I like too. him too. It's a bummer. Every, he's, Carmen he's Angelo, dead. you know, I, over at TAM, I'll run into him. He'll be like, eh, what do you think about Justin Fields? I'm like, I like the guy. They're not going to keep him, but I like him. But I don't think that, um, I don't think people are clamoring for him. So. No, there's a lot of people in Chicago that have signs in their yards. They're like, this is, we love Justin No, like I mean other teams. Oh, the team. Yeah. Other team. Well, no, I people there like him. I mean, no, you know, the we, other teams want him, but they just don't uh, want to overpay for him. So they're waiting until the Bears get a little desperate. And yeah. They give him away for cheaper rather than. We had to live through the to Jay Cutler and Rex Grossman yeah. years. So they want to get, they want to trade a fourth or fifth round pick and not a first or second. Well, anyway, congratulations to Joe Flacco, uh, that uh, dude that was uh, complaining about the Steelers and saying that it's Gardner Minshew. He he got a bag too. He ended up in I think uh, Las Vegas. Oh, good for that him. That would have been the the job I would have wanted to go to the Raiders in Las Vegas. Yeah, how come? All those residencies out there. At least <laughs> even if your season's not great, you, could, you there's always something to do. You know, somebody mentioned have to me some fun. You can look at the sphere. When we Maybe were, they put your head on the sphere. Yeah, <laughs> a giant. Uh, we were. I was talking about that Christian artist Lauren Daigle earlier, and somebody mentioned to me that they call her the Christian Adele because apparently she sounds like her. So I don't know. Does she just take like Adele songs and <laughs> make everything a little Christy? Hello from the heaven side. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the other Adele songs. But, Rolling um, in the deep. <laughs> Sitting on my knees. Yeah. I don't know, but, you know, they make that Rolling in the Deep song about prayer. Yeah, or There's, rumor has it or yeah. something. Rumor has it, the Lord loves me. <laughs> I'm going to break here. I'll have those. If you like Joe Satriani and Steve Vai, you are in luck because you're going to see them both out at MGM Northfield Park, the Satch Vai Tour, uh, this spring, mid-April. So I'll have those tickets for you after the break. It's the Ellen Park Show. Everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app or whatever smart device you have. Just tell me to play the Alan Cox Show on iHeartRadio. From the Universal Windows Direct Weather Center, WMMS Weather. Showers and thunderstorms tonight down to 44. Tomorrow, cloudy, rain ending in the morning, high of 48. Partly sunny to start Saturday, then a chance of afternoon and evening rain Saturday with a high of 56. This report is sponsored by Conrad's Tire Express and Total Car Care. It's the Tire Madness Sale at Conrad's. Get up to $375 off four select Goodyear tires, including the popular Weather Ready. Perfect for Cleveland weather. Blue Falls and Conrad's. Keeping your car clean and safe on the road. Conrad. When you drive a vehicle so reliable it's backed by a 10-year, 100,000-mile limited warranty, you stop thinking about what you can't do and start doing what you never thought possible. Find out what you're capable of in a vehicle that inspires confidence around every corner. Lease a new 2024 Forte LXS for $189 a month for 24 months with $34.99 due at signing for well-qualified lessees. Kia. Movement that inspires. 
Warranties include 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain and 5-year, 60,000-mile basic. Warranties are limited. See retailer for details. Call 800-333-4KIA for details. Always drive safely. New 2024 Forte LXS 2.0 liter FWD IVT 21,645 MSRP. MSRP includes destination handling and excludes taxes, title, registration, license fees, options, and retailer charges. No security deposit required. Extra prices set by dealer and may vary. Subject to credit approval by Kia Finance. Lessie is responsible for insurance, maintenance, repairs, 20 cents per mile, over 10,000 miles a year, excess wear, and a $400 termination fee. Subject to dealer participation. Offers may not be combined except where specified. Must take delivery by 430-24. Limited inventory available. The Planet Fitness Black Card is packed with perks. Not like other gyms. Hi, can I bring a friend to work out? Oh, is my membership good at other locations? Okay. But at Planet Fitness, the PF Black Card gets you tons of perks. Bring a friend for free anytime. Access to any of our 2,500 plus locations and more. Join for just $1 down, $24.99 a month. Cancel anytime. Deal ends March 15th. Planet Fitness is the preferred gym of the Cleveland Cavaliers. See Home Club for details. Hey, McKinsey here. If you've been looking for a car, truck, or SUV that's in stock and ready for immediate delivery, you'll find it today at Ken Ganley, Ohio's number one automotive retailer. With 23 brands, 50 locations, and over 6,000 new and used vehicles in stock, you're sure to find the perfect vehicle at the perfect price. For the location nearest you, visit KenGanleyAuto.com. Ken Ganley, we drive Ohio. Hey, it's Alan for Northeast Factory Direct. What's that? Oh, I thought you said March Mattress. Well, you can understand why. A lot of people don't want to update theirs because they're crazy expensive, which is why I tell people, you want a good night's sleep, knowing that you saved a ton of money, get yourself to Northeast Factory Direct. They've got their Sleep Easy mattress collection made right here in the U.S. exclusively for them. Everything mattress-related, you are set and ready to count sheep and all the money you saved. Walk into any one of their locations, see for yourself, or get online to northeastfactorydirect.com. Don't rely on the luck of the Irish. Stay downtown to stay safe. Stay overnight in the historic heart of downtown in the Kimpton Schofield Hotel. Bring the dog and the fam and stay lucky. Ballet, walk, sleep downtown, and stay safe. Visit us downtown at the corner of East 9th and Euclid or online at theschofieldhotel.com. Auto show savings are here at Ken Ganley. Ohio's number one Kia dealer. We've got all the hot new 2024 Kia models, over 800 on sale, including Celtos, K5, Sportage, Sorento, Forte, Soul, Carnival, and Telluride. Price starts from just $19,988. That's right, $19,988. Like a new 24 Kia Forte LX. Buy with as low as 0% APR financing for 60 months. Zero down. 0% financing for 60 months. Got to trade? We want to pay it off, regardless of what you owe. At Ken Ganley Kia in Medina, Mentor, Alliance, and Boardman. Or online at KenGanleyKia.com. Tell them McKinsey sent you, because I want to see you in a Ken Ganley Kia. 1667 per thousand financed on a 24 Kia EV6 plus tax, tag, title, and dock field approved credit through KMF. Number one in overall retail Kia sales in the central region from 1-1 to 12 23 per Kia Motors year-end sales report expires 4 24 Protect your dream home with American Family Insurance. And you can weather any storm. You'll also save up to 25% by bundling home, auto, and life. American Family Insurance. Get a quote. Find an agent at AmFam.com. Products not available in every state. Discounts may not apply to all coverages on an auto or home policy. Discounts do not apply to life insurance policies. Visit AmFam.com to learn how discounts may apply to you. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, S.I. and its operating companies, American Family Life Insurance Company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Ew. Gotta get rid of this old Backstreet Boys t-shirt. Tell me why. Because it stinks, boys. Tell me why. I've washed it so many times, but the odor won't come out. Tell me why. No, you tell me why I can't get rid of this odor. Have you tried Downy Rinse and Refresh? It doesn't just cover up odors. It helps remove them. Wow, it worked, guys. Yeah. Downy Rinse and Refresh removes more odor in one wash than the leading value detergent in three washes. Find it wherever you buy laundry products. All rise. In a Massachusetts courtroom, the judge concluded that the defendant shredded evidence in the case. The defendant, Bernie Marino, who was sued for stealing his employees' pay. So before the trial, Marino shredded the evidence against him. Shadiness is a pattern with Marino, who quietly supported amnesty for millions of illegals, but now pretends otherwise. You can tell a lot about someone's character by what he does when no one's watching. Bernie Marino flunks that test. And Secretary of State Frank LaRose is no better. 
LaRose quietly spent your tax dollars to benefit himself politically. And LaRose changed Ohio's ballot language to affect the election results. It was a breach of public trust. Bernie Marino and Frank LaRose, if they're this sneaky and corrupt in Ohio, just imagine if they go to Washington. Buckeye Leadership Fund paid for and is responsible for the content of this advertising. Not authorized by any candidate or candidate's committee. Buckeyeslead.org. Kia of Bedford's got what you need. A shot to save up to $5,000 off any new Kia in stock. All this month, step up to the line at KLB and sink a shot from the foul line. Save $500. Train a three-pointer and save $1,500. Make it from half court. Save $3,000. Sink more than one shot and stack your savings for up to five grand on any new Kia in stock. Get your shot. To now through March 31st at Kia of Bedford. Kia of Bedford.com. Win a trip to Vegas and compete for a chance to win $10,000 in the Bud Light Mini Hoops Finals Tournament. Qualify for your chance to win by registering at WMMS.com or by participating in a Mini Hoops Challenge event near you. Visit WMMS.com for locations and all the details. Cleveland Clothing Company, the land's one-stop shop for all things Cleveland. Cleveland tees, hoodies, accessories, and of course, the official MMS buzzer gear. Use the promo code CLOVER all month long for 20% off in-store or online. ClevelandClothing.com, the brand of the land. Yeah, that's how it feels when you can get something else with Rack Exchange. A bigger TV, an upgraded washer, a different item altogether. Because now you can exchange an item at Rena Center for another item within six months as often as you want. Learn more at renacenter.com. For customers in good standing within six months following active rental date, exchange items subject to approval and adjustment of payment. Prior rent paid applied to reduce total cost to own for replacement agreement, but not in full to same as cash amount. Discover, plan, do. The Cleveland Home and Remodeling Expo, March 22nd through 24th at the IX Center. Three days only for great deals, new ideas, and practical advice with trusted local experts. Get easy home cleaning tips and tricks from HGTV's The Laundry Guy, Patrick Richardson, on Friday and Saturday, sponsored by Spectrum. Plus, explore the street of tiny home living. From kitchens and baths to flooring and more, don't miss the Cleveland Home and Remodeling Expo. Plan your visit and save on tickets at homeandremodelingexpo.com. Traffic. On the Elk and Elk Traffic Center, if you were injured because of medical malpractice, call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. Expect heavy traffic in the areas where these accidents have been cleared away. 77 North before 490, 90 West at Detroit, MLK North before I-90, Rockside Road and Lee Road, West 143 at Puritus. Jackie Roberts in the Traffic Center. This report is sponsored by Anthony Jeselnik at the State Theater. Don't miss your chance to see stand-up comedian Anthony Jeselnik on his Bones and All Tour. Come into Cleveland's Playhouse Square on March 16th. Limited tickets available starting at $29.50. Get tickets now at PlayhouseSquare.org. The free iHeartRadio app has over 100 commercial-free stations waiting for you to explore right now. Like the vinyl experience. Music legends experienced through the authentic sound of vinyl. The Rolling Stones, Tom Petty, Pink Floyd, The Police, and so many more. Just open the free iHeartRadio app, search vinyl experience, and listen now. iHeartRadio. Free never sounded so good. It's time to give stuff away. It's time to give that stuff away. It's time to give stuff away. Give stuff away. All right, I want to go see Joe Satriani and Steve Vai, two legendary guitarists doing a co-headlining run. The Satch Vai Tour That's what they're calling it. It's going to happen Saturday night, April the 13th out at MGM Northfield Park. Ticketmaster.com's got the details. I'll give you this pair right now for being caller number 10. Good luck. Satriani and Steve Vai. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. One of life's most pressing questions. What do I like about Alan Cox? Finally answered. Um... All right, I don't like much about you. The Alan Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS. (laughs) 
The Cavs are off tonight. The big win in New Orleans though last night against the Pelicans. So they're off tonight Pels. and tomorrow night. What's that? Put down the Pels. Put down the Pels. Cavs over Pels. Probably call them the birds down there, maybe. Maybe not. I said Pels. Uh, Houston is where they're going to be on Saturday. That's a 5 o'clock tip-off against the Rockets. So 4.30 here on MMS and on the iHeartRadio app is where you'll be able to hear it. If you listen to us on the app, tell me where. If you're not doing it in Ohio, Cynthia is in Surprise, Arizona. Eric listens in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Ryan's in Seattle. Uh, Holly is a bureau chief in Durant, Iowa. And um, Michael listens in Tucson. So thanks. Um, oh, Bill's going to be out tonight. So we're doing the last few appearances for the Bud Light Mini uh, Hoops Challenge. March Mini Hoops Challenge. And each one of these stops, we get two qualifiers. You're playing Papa Shot, right? So if you're really good at that, you get a shot to be in Vegas. So we get two qualifiers from each one of these stops, and then the finals are going to be next Saturday. Uh, I'll be your host for that. And then one person from that, whoever ends up with the most points, uh, you're going to go to Vegas and compete for the $10,000 grand prize. So uh, Bill is out tonight. He's at the porch in Willoughby from no, uh, 7 to 9. So you got to haul ass from here to yep. Willoughby. Got to get out there. Tomorrow night he'll be at the Islander from 7 to 9. That's in Middleburg Heights. And then Saturday. I'm excited to go to the Islander. I've heard good things. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And then Saturday I'm going to be in Brunswick a little earlier. That one is from 5 to 7. I'll be at Hot Shots. Which gives you time to haul ass over from Brunswick to, to Akron, Akron, Ohio. Akron. Where I'm going to be at Wild Oscars at the Akron Civic Theater. Uh, you can get tickets for that at BillSquire.com. Uh, remember a couple weeks ago I did that uh, reverse crowd work show? Reverse? I remember you mentioning yeah. that, yes. It's up on my YouTube channel now if people want to watch that as well. How did that go? It was so much fun. We had a Explain great the time. premise again to so me. So the premise was people in the audience would ask me questions, and I also had some ringer questions from different comedians that I didn't know beforehand. So, like, Mary asked me a question. Uh, she asked me, F, Mary, kill, uh, 71, 90, and 480. Had fun answering that one. Uh, Roy Wood Jr. asked me a question from The Daily Show, formerly of The Daily Show. Uh, he asked me a, a pretty good question. Kyle Kinane asked me a good question. So, And then the audience got into it too and asked me it was it was a lot of fun and you can watch is that gonna be, that's gonna be a regular thing i think so i think uh hilarity's enjoyed it and i enjoyed it and we can we can build on it is that an hour show how long was that i did about 45 minutes and then to keep it nice and tight for youtube you know the attention span is not the same as the live show the energy is not the same so i cut it down to about 24 minutes okay just for the because there's a lot of cleveland references and stuff like that and so sure. i got a little of that stuff in there but not all of it That'll, will that work against you on the YouTubes? No, it'll be fine. Oh. <laughs> Everything's already against me on the YouTubes. Everything is so hard. Is to, YouTube, YouTube doesn't so hard. like you? No, you, you, the, the algorithm's just difficult to figure it out, and I'm I'm learning, but it's it's not as simple as just post the video, and it's going to automatically get all your subscribers to watch it. You still have to finesse the optimization of the video to really get it to show up in people's feeds. Did you see the TikTok of the guy talking about the specifics of the Jake Paul Mike Tyson fight? No. I don't know if it's all true. It didn't seem like he was doing a bit, but there's a guy on TikTok that was going through what the specifics of Jake Paul's contract to do this fight are, the details. Because people were like, I think we might have even touched on it that Jake Paul has so many specific caveats in his agreement to do this with Tyson. Um, but if any of the, it just doesn't sound like it could be true because who would want to do this under these conditions? So I'll just play you what this guy okay. was doing on TikTok here, talking about the Jake Paul, Mike Tyson fight. Jake Paul is all set to box against Mike Tyson this July, but the rules in this fight are absolutely absurd. Even at almost 60 years old, Tyson would absolutely dominate Jake Paul. So they had to adjust the rules to make this a somewhat fair fight. 
First rule is for Paul's own safety. He'll be able to wear headgear like an amateur boxer, but Tyson won't be wearing any of that. That gives Paul a chance to knock Tyson out. So he's going to wear headgear? Is that is this for real, though? Is, I don't know. Uh, this guy yeah. doesn't seem like he's doing a bit. He's like... This is well, he's going to sell it as not doing. Well, no, bit, I know, but, I but people think... people on TikTok don't sell that very well. They're always wink, wink, wink. You know. No, I think nobody wants to watch a fight with Jake Paul That's wearing. That's what I'm saying. Headgear. Well, the next part's even better. This is where you yeah. lost me, but it is all funny. But with his headgear, Jake Paul won't get knocked out and won't get badly injured. The second rule is that Jake is allowed to tag team with his brother Logan Paul, but tag team isn't even the correct way of describing it, despite that being what the contract says, because he'll be able to bring Logan in and they'll both be able to fight at the same time. For the sake of his ego, okay, I- that can't, <laughs> that yeah, can't that, be true, yeah, right? This, this dude's <laughs> trolling. This is a goof. I love it. Uh, if that were true, if he wore headgear and his brother could tap in. Mike Tyson, by the way, I don't know if you saw any of that day one training for Mike oh, Tyson. He's, he's He can move. He's he still the throw, favorite for this fight, by the way. He can throw some Mike Tyson. Punches. Holy cow. Would not want to get punched by Mike Tyson. No, at all. So at first I was like, well... The headwear I could see. Would you let <laughs> the I need my brother in here with me? How Mike much you let Mike Tyson punch you in the stomach? <clears throat> He's wearing a regular boxing glove. Oh God, this is the old shimmel bit. Yeah. Um. How much? How much to punch me in the stomach? Yeah. Just one shot. A couple million dollars. I a mean, couple million. The guy could disable me for life with a punch. A full-on Mike Tyson punch to the to the gut. Yeah. He could break all of my bones and and rearrange my internal organs. A couple million dollars? You think it should be more? No, I think it should be way less. What? Take one. You can take one. What? A Mike Tyson punch. Mm-hmm. I mean, he used to knock professional boxers He's out. He's 58 years old now. But I'm not... But I'm not Mike Tyson. Yeah, but you got those abs I never, of steel. <laughs> I never was Mike Tyson. He was Mike Tyson. Well, he wasn't Mike Tyson because he was good at taking punches. He's good at throwing them. You, but you want me to take one from him? So, uh, no, I need a couple million. Dollars. You need a couple million. Yeah, right? Absolutely. Pound cake, couple million. It's a lot of things uh, I would do for less money than some other people, but a full-on Mike Tyson punch in the gut, I would need a couple million dollars to be comfortable. This is not a head spot. The shot. No, it's like what the absolute lowest you would do it for, not to be comfortable. I oh, you, who? Me or him? Him. Two million dollars. Two million dollars. One for my. Medical. I thought you guys were gonna be like five grand, ten grand. No. Five grand. No. I need. I'm gonna have hospital bills. I, that's what I was gonna say. This is insurance. This is more, this so, is, this is so more than deductible. <laughs> and then you go a little plus that. This is more than like crapping blood for a couple days. If you're talking a full on Mike Tyson punch. He gets, he gets one good bust in the chops. Oh, no way. Or the chops are your face. No, the, not in your face. In the, in, right. Like in your, cho- no, your chops. No, I don't, is, I don't is want your... him punching me in the stomach. stomach. No. Well, I don't want him to, but I'd probably do it for 20 grand. Yeah. 20 grand. $20,000. See that? Mine might be high. That seems really low. You can blow through 20 grand in a weekend. It's one punch. I know, it's but it's suck. a Mike Tyson it's punch. It's one Mike Tyson punch. You're not telling him to pull his punches. Old. No, he's gonna, he's gonna. Listen, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna suck for a week. I don't think it's gonna. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna kill me or put me in the hospital for. He's not punching me in the I, ribs. I don't know. Punch me in. You know. But your ribs are right above your stomach. He's gonna catch some ribs. Then he broken ribs. He's not a sniper. Twenty thousand bucks. Punching you with his massive fist in the stomach. I'd be surprised if it didn't go through, through me. He might come out my spine. Uh, <laughs> I'm not a trained pugilist. I'm a regular dude. I'm gonna be like Mike Tyson ca- is going to full on punch in the stomach. I'm going to fall backwards into a net like one of those cannonball guys from those old <laughs> movies, but I'm going to take that punch and get that money. For 20 grand. Yeah, that's not enough. I would need at l- the very least $1 million. I was going to get $1 million, but all my medical expenses are taken care of. All right. Like for free. So one million plus and, medical. Well, no, no, no the no, medical. No, no, the no. Me, you can take care of your medical with a million dollars. I want to. But. I want mi- and on t- I'll do you one better. I need a million dollars flat. So it, whatever the taxes. No would taxes. Be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. These are all so, tax free. This is all tax free. Okay, so tax free one million. I was gonna say Mike flat. Tyson doesn't run the IRS. He does now in no. this scenario. So you're getting punched by IRS agent Mike Tyson. Mm-hmm. Ah. So I would IRS. say one point seven million because they're, <laughs> they're going to take seven hundred thousand of my one million dollars. You won't pay any taxes on this. <laughs> You're free and clear. I just forget to punch you in the stomach one time. 
No, I don't want to get punched by Mike Tyson. Anywhere. I used to hate getting punched, man. Getting punched in- No fun, no, man. No, getting punched is terrible. It's it's not good. I'm not saying that I'm going like to a- handle this well. I'm not going to say I'm going to take, but I'm saying you guys are, your prices are way too high. 20 grand seems really That's low, though. Low. That seems comically low. Yeah, what could you get for 20 grand, like, outright? Can't I'm not even- trying to buy, spend it on one thing. Can't even get a house or 20 grand anymore. I'm just saying 20 grand. When could you get a house for twenty grand? Back by the way, in the forties, Al. Oh, I thought <laughs> before we were all alive. I thought you meant like in, in 40s, our lifetime. Alan. Back in, back in when my grandfather bought his house. For I thought 20 you grand. meant in our lifetimes. No, take it back to the days where you could buy a house for twenty grand. How, however long ago that was, but I know there was a time. <laughs> Alan, if there was ever a reason for a show, go fund me. This is it. Let's raise that twenty grand. Do it. And get it done. Headgear only protects your ears, somebody said. Yeah, we wore it in wrestling. I didn't know what, the, but I but I assume they were talking about boxing headgear, which you've got the, don't you have yeah, the brow pad like a, and the mouth a, thing? Yeah, yeah, that's got like a pad around the Yeah, it's not head. like wrestling ear gear. Again, it's either going to be a truce or. It, a truce. A, a, a tie, sorry, whatever. <laughs> it's either going to be a tie or... What are we fighting for? Mike Tyson. Why can't we be friends? <laughs> Reach some detente because everyone, Mike Tyson. Because everyone knows that Mike Tyson could beat the stew out of Jake, <clears throat> I wonder how much money they were going to pay him to either take the fall because it's going to be too obvious. Same thing with Floyd Mayweather. When uh, Logan Paul fought Floyd Mayweather, they couldn't pay him enough to lose, so they said, okay, you guys can tie. You don't. It's just a play fight. It's just for entertainment. This one, yeah, I but think, also, but also Tyson is. You know, people are talking about how much older he is, and that is matter. true. That is true. But I'm telling you, if you watch that day one training video, um, the guy hasn't like lost a step per se. And you don't lose. I mean, it's not like he's. But what I'm saying is, not it, it's not like Mike Tyson is going to go in there. He knows what it is. He's not going to go in there and want to kill. Jake Paul, but, but it doesn't mean he wants to lose either. So they have well, to he's not gonna lose. He's not gonna lose. But it's gonna be it's gonna be a judge's decision or something. This is not gonna be some TKO bout. It's just not. Mm. No, but, they wanted to. They wanted to go rounds. Yeah. It's gonna. Um. <laughs> what if it doesn't? What if it's the first round? Boom! <laughs> he knocks him out. He's like, "Give my money." All right. <laughs> How much? Money. If you're wearing the training thing, and he gets to unload on you, With the much? sumo suit. Yeah, that suit, like the the big puffy sumo suit. Well, it's not like a p- puffy sumo suit, but it's like a big, uh, it's a big pad. Uh, I don't know about that. Are you still going cr- crazy high, or are you going like fifty bucks? I mean, I would, I, I would like to, uh, I, I would like to have a million dollars in this scenario. No, you're wearing a pad now. Doesn't matter. A million dollars, half a million. Alan, that's what killed Harry Houdini. Yeah, one a lifetime one, of doing a bunch <laughs> one, of stuff. One punch, yeah. I thought he had a, well, maybe that, I thought he had a ruptured appendix, and that's what killed him, but maybe it's because he got punched in the appendix. There are plenty of houses in Akron that are 20 grand at sheriff's auction, Travis says. Yeah, that's not what anybody's it's looking for, I don't scene. think. Yeah, sheriff's auction. It's just the studs. I'm sure you can go to East Cleveland and there's a house for $20,000. Or at least a lot for twenty thousand dollars. Oh yes, I'm sure there are houses that you can get for that. East but. Cleveland luxury real estate. Oh <laughs> yeah, luxury. <laughs> luxury. There's got to be some old man. That used to be old millionaires row over there. Yeah, no, you're right. There are some. Yeah, 150 yeah. years ago it was. It wasn't 150. Yeah, it was. It was, like, it was like 60 years ago. Oh, please. 60 years ago, East Cleveland was the poppin' suburb. It was. And they all went away. Mike from Parma wants to know why there isn't an alcoholic drink called Mike Tyson's Hard Punch. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there was at some point. I don't know. Al and I can't get a decent watch for less than twenty thousand dollars. I'd need two fifty minimum. Oh, aren't you just so rich? Decent watch. A decent watch. There's a watch on your phone. There's a clock on your phone. <laughs> Even I stopped wearing watches, and I was hanging on to them longer than yeah. anybody. And I wasn't wearing no twenty thousand dollar watch. I got a watch for my girlfriend for my birthday, and I was wearing it at my show last week. And I haven't even said it yet because I—it's basically jewelry. It's jewelry, now. yeah. There is a. Two- I can't even get a decent watch for twenty thousand dollars. Well, he might be. I mean, I don't know watches that well, so he knows more than I do. But well, they've actually done a lot of studies on watches, and 
uh, I believe a Timex is just about as good as a Rolex when it comes to just t- keeping time. Maybe he wants a Piaget or something along yeah. those lines. Alan, if Pound Cake wants to move to Key West, I might be able to get him a job at WGAY Radio. <laughs> it's not called WGAY. It is, actually. His mom's a DJ there. <laughs> okay. It is WGAY, <laughs> FM in Key West. <laughs> okay. It's 105. It's par- Party 105.7. Okay. And he said his mom is, I went to the website, his mom is a DJ down there. Now, here's W-G-A-Y. the trouble. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I wrote him back. I go, the first job I was ever offered in radio was in Key West. A guy I knew was the GM, and the money was nothing, and it's so expensive. Yeah, Even this, this this dude that texted me is like he'd need three jobs to afford rent, but it's uh it's a gay wonderland. And but I, I mean, thirty job on the island. Thirty years ago, when when I got offered this job at a station, I don't even know if it's there anymore. It's called Island One Hundred Six, and they were like, "Well, you get paid in sunshine." I was like, "Yeah, I I, I can't spend sunshine on things." So. It was prohibitively expensive. It turned out that the guy I knew who was the GM was embezzling money from the radio uh, company. So I really ducked a bullet because the whole thing blew up. But, uh, yeah, WGAY Radio is down there, Pound Cake. I'll take a field trip and see first. You should hit this dude up. uh, Forward his email. I mean, I guarantee you, you would be getting paid as much as you're getting paid here. Uh, But you'd be in Key West. Oh, great. You'd be loving life. I don't know. You get it. You could get. You'd be I'd on be the air. The you get a DJ. <clears throat> no, no. Well, you you get um. You get a gig on the air. You would get a gig like doing clubs at night or something. Mm-hmm. You know, you'd be brand new in town, so you'd be like the, uh, the the new shiny cool thing. Like when I first came to Cleveland, you're the like the new thing. All right, here's here's you guys owe a new million dollars. All <laughs> He's still on it. Mike Tyson's punch is estimated to have a power of sixteen hundred joules. The equivalent would how be, many foot pounds is that of uh, pressure? I don't have that in front of me, but it's uh, revealed that the power of Tyson's punch is equivalent to being shot by thirteen people using a twenty two caliber pistol using a flak jacket. So we could recreate I don't this want pretty that. easily if you raise the funds. I don't want that. I'm trying to get my 20K. <laughs> I'll put on a flak jacket. We'll get 13 people with 22 caliber, caliber pistols. Well, the station will sign off on this. <laughs> Actually, the what station could go probably wrong? Would. Yeah, they'd be like, oh, this, pretty soon we're not going to have to pay Bill. <laughs> <laughs> and I did happen uh, to find some Is there a high mortality mm-hmm. rate with this particular stunt? What's that? I did happen to find some luxury real estate in East Cleveland, by the way. Only $300,000 for like a mansion. Okay. That's pretty good. All right, sir. Four bedrooms, four bathrooms. Alan, I wear a Rolex while I'm farming, and it takes a beating. Does it take a licking and keep on oh, ticking? ticking? Mm-hmm. Imagine if Tyson was getting paid big money by people for him to punch them at a Comic-Con or something. Step up and get punched by Mike Tyson. Come up here. You want me to punch you? Come over here. What about Dredrick Tatum? He could do it, too. Except he's not, a re- he's not a real he's person. He's not a real person. That's yeah. true. Mm. Well, yeah, I, I, you know, I might be convinced to uh, change my thoughts on the subject, but um, I really <laughs> don't want to get punched. All right, Mike Tyson's punch is equivalent to being hit by a Vespa. <laughs> <laughs> In the stomach? You want to get hit going by how a Vespa? Fa- going how fast? I don't know, Vespa speed. Vespa speed. Mm. Celebrity spoof. Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Mike. Oh, just give me the clip. I don't need you talking about it. These people. I sincerely urge you all to stay in school. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Frederick Tatum. That was truly a KO. Knockout oration. <laughs> need a ride home? You really don't want that. Trust me. Mr. Tatum, do you mind if I swab you with this damp rag? No, not at all. Swab away. Whoa, whoa. Nobody mentioned the beaker. Please? It's for science. Well, for science. In that case, proceed. Please. That's uh, Hank Azaria. Yeah, he does Dredger Tatum? I think so. I think of Jackass, I think it was Jackass Forever, 
where they had they <laughs> the giant fist comes around the corner. No, and in, uh punched the dude in the cup. <laughs> oh, yeah, he didn't die. <laughs> he had a bad day. Yeah, he had a bad day. Andy, yes, sir. What's up? I want to tell Bill why he's wrong about the Mike Tyson thing. Okay, well, he's right here. Go ahead. All right. It's because whatever he hits, he destroys. Well, when you put it like that. (laughs) What? I I don't get it. Is that from Rocky IV or something? Uh, Exactly. Yeah. I will break you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Andy. I got a break. Want to send a text? 35192. AllenCoxShow.com. You can see our lovely faces there and listen anywhere on the iHeartRadio app. This Welcome to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Will again not be their year. They are the snubbed. Snubbed. Snubbed again. Snubbed again this year. The band's not yet welcomed into the hallowed halls of Cleveland's Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Hall of Fame snubs. So, this weekend, the buzzard will honor the outcasts. Biggest snub. It's bullshit. From Alice in Chains yeah. to White Zombie. Yeah. And all the snubbed in between. They got snubbed again. With snubble shots. Back to back songs from the Rock Hall's biggest snubs. Rejected by the Rock Hall. Snubble shots. All this weekend on 100.7 Snubble UMMS. Your afternoon drive is brought to you by the Ken Ganley Auto Group, Ohio's number one automotive retailer. Case Priest, Return of the Sinners Tour 2024, with special guests, Billy Guns and Burning Witches. Saturday, March 20th at the Agora. Tickets on sale now at AXS.com. Start clean with Clorox because Clorox delivers a powerful clean every time. Because messes happen. Because oh, my charcoal mask. Great, because why would I put that on my face when I could drop it in my sink? This is what I get for multitasking. Ugh, why is charcoal so sticky? <clears throat> Hello? Hey, Janice. I am so sorry. I thought I was on mute. <laughs> no, we don't need to reschedule. I'll just stay off camera. Ooh, yeah, that happens. So start clean with Clorox. Use Clorox products as directed. Ever wonder what's around the next corner? Past the trees. Into the canyons. Over the mountains. Or through the desert. That's where adventure lives. Take a Nissan SUV and go find it. By texting 64,000, you agree to receive recurring automated marketing messages from Babbel. Message and data rates may apply. No purchase required. Terms apply. Available at babbel.com slash TNC. My new exercise bike. Yeah, <laughs> more like my $1,500 coat rack. I got a guitar. Never even learned smoke on the water. At Babbel, we get it. Learning something new is hard, especially a new language. Yeah, I've forgotten all my high school French. My Spanish starts at hola and ends at adios. Make it easy on yourself. Get Babbel, the language learning app built by 200 plus language experts to teach real world conversations for any situation with research proven lessons, addictive games, immersive podcasts, and live online classes with real teachers. Sounds like fun. It's fun and fast. Babbel's bite-sized lessons take 10 minutes a day. You can start having real conversations in as little as three weeks. Three weeks? Hola, Espanol. Ready to learn a new language? It starts here. Now try Babbel free when you text RADIO to 64000. To try Babbel free, text RADIO to 64000. Text RADIO to 64000. Hey, it's Alan. Cars for Kids is hands down the quickest, fastest way to get rid of your old car, no matter what shape it's in. So do a good thing without cutting into your schedule at all. Just go to carsforkids.org today. And remember, that's cars with a K. At the Ohio Lottery, we make Keno fun. Your way. That means you pick your wager. Will it be a dollar, two, a crisp 20 bucks? Your call. Like picking your own numbers? Use any inspiration you like. Birthdays, jersey numbers, you name it. And if you don't feel like choosing, there's the super quick auto pick. With regular promotions that'll get you more bang for your Kino buck, multiple ways to win, prizes galore, and live draws every few minutes. Anytime is the right time to get in on the Kino action. Kino is always fun, your way. Lottery players are subject to Ohio laws and commission regulations. Play responsibly. 
voting. It's more than just a right. It's a responsibility. March 19th is Ohio's primary election, and we encourage you to make your voice heard. Ohio offers three convenient ways to vote. Early in person, by absentee ballot, and in person on election day. No matter which method you choose, you can be confident that your vote is secure and your voice will be heard. Go to VoteOhio.gov to learn more. Tired of overpaying for wireless with Verizon? Now you can put T-Mobile to the test for free. T-Mobile's Network Pass lets you test drive America's largest 5G network for three months while you keep your current phone and carrier. Get real-time stats and see how T-Mobile's coverage stacks up against Verizon. Plus, families and small businesses can save up to 20% versus Verizon when they switch. At T-Mobile, you don't have to choose between a great network and a great price. You get both. See for yourself with our no-strings-attached three-month free trial. Download the T-Mobile app to get started today or visit our store to learn more. One trial per user. Compatible unlock 5G device required. Plan savings with T-Mobile third-line free on essentials or go 5G plus via monthly bill credits versus comparable available plans. Plan features and taxes and fees may vary. Credits stop if you cancel any lines or change plans. See details at T-Mobile.com. Like to fish? Then reel in these fishing deals. Hook, line, and sinker at Fin Feather Fur through March 29th. The Fin is offering 20% off all in-stock fishing items from Strike King, VMC, Venom, and Reaction Innovations. Purchase any Abu Garcia Revo Series bait cast reel and get 30% off your choice of any rod or purchase any 13 fishing fate black casting or spinning rod and receive any 13 fishing spinning reel for only ten dollars don't miss this event come to the fin in ashland middleburg heights canton boardman myland or rossford for all of your fishing gear tracy over to you for weather the sun must be shining dave because the seven for seven sale is back at meyer mix or match hundreds of items like extra large avocados craft macaroni and cheese and dan and greek yogurt pick any seven for just seven dollars there's a strong chance of saving with the same quality Meyer deals in store or online. Back to you, Dave. Sounds great, Tracy. Deals so good. You've just got to talk about them. Meyer. Exclusions apply. See all the deals in the Meyer app. Are you struggling to get Wi-Fi in every room? Maybe it's time to switch to Verizon Home Internet. 5G Home Plus plans come with whole home Wi-Fi, so you get fast, reliable internet no matter what room you're in at no extra charge. Call 1-800-VERIZON to switch today. It's your Verizon. Wi-Fi extender provided during professional setup if recommended after Wi-Fi performance analysis or shipped upon customer request after setup. May require the purchase of additional Wi-Fi extenders. The Planet Fitness Black Card is packed with perks, not like other gyms. Hi, can I bring a friend to work out? Oh, is my membership good at other locations? Okay. But at Planet Fitness, the PF Black Card gets you tons of perks. Bring a friend for free anytime. Access to any of our 2,500 plus locations and more. Join for just $1 down, $24.99 a month. Cancel anytime. Deal ends March 15th. Planet Fitness is the preferred gym of the Cleveland Cavaliers. See Home Club for details. WMMS. Cleveland. Call the Alan Cox Show. Thanks for turning me on and allowing me to spend this time with you. I hope I can turn you on. 216-578-1007 or 1-800-348-1007.
little Steely Crew for your listening pleasure. One of the great mashups from, well, either DJ Cummerbund or Bill McClintock, provided that they are not one and the same. But as for right now, they are the legends in that mashup game. And if they get two bands I like, boy, I'm a sucker for them. Even if they get two bands I don't like, I'm a sucker for them. So much work goes into these. People don't realize how much work goes into these. And so even if you hear one you don't like, you know, when you're scrolling through and you're like, eh, that one's all right. You're like, these guys put so much work into it. Cavs are off tonight. They are uh, coming off a win in New Orleans against the Pels. And uh, tonight, tomorrow night, they're not playing, but Saturday afternoon, in fact, uh, it's going to be a 5 o'clock tip-off against the Houston Rockets. Houston's on uh, Central Time, so does that mean it's a 4 o'clock tip-off? Are they playing a 4 in the afternoon? Yeah, it seems In like Houston? It. Wow. And then they'll be in Indianapolis, I think, on Monday to play the Pacers before they uh, come back home. I heard from one of our bureau chiefs, a couple of our bureau chiefs, in fact, um, out Kansas City way about, did you see the hail they were getting? They were no. telling people, stay inside because the hail, I'll show you the picture here. It was dropping down on Kansas City like baseball-sized oh, hail, like bigger than golf balls for scale there. and Yeah, pretty intense. The whole Kansas City metro area there, they were telling people, if you don't stay away from the windows and stay inside. They were getting about four-inch chunks of ice coming out of the, uh, out of the sky. Topeka, Kansas was getting them too. They call it gorilla hail. Because it's covered in pubes. Uh, <clears throat> so, yeah, thank you. Uh, if you listen to us on iHeartRadio from Kansas City or anywhere else, tell me where. Chad listens up the road in Erie, PA. Mark's in Bayonne, New Jersey. Patty listens in Auburn, Washington. Scott is in Sophia, North Carolina. And uh, Renee is in Tavares, Florida. And you can leave messages there for us, too. Alan, Kevin Pittsburgh here, listening to the podcast, talking about the rats um, eating the weed and pooping it out in New Orleans. They have those coffee beans that those cats poop out, and that goes for 45 to $600 per pound. So I really think that Mary living in New York has an opportunity to get on the ground floor, something real special here. Rat poop weed. I uh, love you. Love me. Hate the show. Bye. Rat check! Rat poop weed. Yeah, no, that's kind of what I was alluding to as we were talking about how the police headquarters in New Orleans had been overrun with rats that were eating the marijuana out of the evidence lockers. And so all the rats on there were high. And I was actually just completely unrelated talking to somebody about this the other day, that coffee that's, I think the animal is called the civet. And it is cat poop. The beans are digested by the cat and then pooped out. And it's very, very expensive coffee. What makes it? Good? It's a co- it's a coffee. The civet is the animal, so I don't think it's a cat, but it looks like a it looks like a muskrat or something, and it's a coffee that is made of partially digested coffee beans that these animals eat and then poop out, and they're fermented when they go through the animal. And so for whatever reason, uh, at least a few years ago, and this was a big deal, this, uh, they, they called it poop coffee. And it was go- because it was so rare, I guess, they were really charging out the ass, if you will, uh, for this coffee. Seinfeld had it on one of his early Comedians in Cars getting coffee. I think the one with him and Jay Leno. Um, they uh, talk about that civet coffee. But the rat poop marijuana, because my theory, we were talking about that, was, you know, these uh, people that work at police HQ there in New Orleans, not only were the rats eating the marijuana, but the desks would be covered in rat poop. You know, little, we've all seen rat poop. Pound cake, what does HQ stand for? Headquarters. Good job. You didn't think he knew that? I just like to give him some softballs every once in a while. (laughs) (laughs) So he can come away with a win. Yeah. Yeah. In what city? New York City. Oh, sorry. Um, 
And so my theory was, well, if you could, that poop is infused with weed. And so if you collected up enough of those uh, pieces of rat poop, maybe you could smoke it. So, yeah, that guy is on to a similar. I was reading about how the kids kind of had their <coughs> had their work around in um, a lot of states where weed isn't legal yet. You know, in the states where weed is legal, you got to be 21. Uh, but there's a lot of kids that are um, doing what they're calling weed light or diet weed. The kids are down with something called Delta 8. I don't oh, yeah. Any of these pet names. Which is not a new thing. No, that's been But high school, minute, yeah. high school seniors are, their workaround is Delta 8. Because there's no age restriction on it in states with legalized pot. And so they were talking to a bunch of high school seniors, and they're like, like yeah. Smoking I'll, clove cigarettes. <laughs> they're like, a lot of them are um, getting high with that. I can't imagine what that does to your body. What was the substance that people were smoking that was in gas stations? It wasn't cigarettes, but it was like K two. That's what it was. K two. Yeah. What w- w- that like came and went. I don't know. Well, because they outlawed it, yeah. didn't they? I mean, I it was that, like yeah, yeah. I don't even know what K two is. What what is it mixed with? It's what they skied in Better Off Dead. Right? Wasn't it the K two? Yes, I he did it on it was. one leg. Yeah, yeah. I could be at home right now. Drinking this monster eggnog that my brother makes with lighter fluid. Where's my two dollars? <laughs> I want my two dollars. K two is called spice, as you know. That's spice is life. Okay. And um, yeah, just synthetic THC. And that's probably more dangerous, I'm guessing, right? Well, I mean, it's, it's made in. The it lab. was probably regulated to some degree, but I don't know that it was. I mean, they outlawed it. And they probably outlawed it in states where weed became legal because they're like, we don't want any, we don't want the competition. I don't know how that worked out, but so due to a loophole in a farm bill from a few years ago, uh, Delta eight kind of blew up. And so high school kids who can't get their hands on the real deal were like, well, I'll take a, I'll take a lighter version of it. But of course, once, and it's always funny to me when the news gets a hold of something that anybody in high school like already knows you know like when the the news stories about is your child doing x y and z but if you were to like to go to the school the kids are like yeah everybody is it's we're not dying we're fine you know you're coming late to the game by the time you read about it or hear about it or something else and then that's when people call their congressman are you going to do anything about Delta 8? And they pretend they know what they're talking about. Yeah, of course. And they look into that. They said there are plenty of students at every average side high school who might be doing Delta 8. So this will be the next um, uh, panic fad sweeping the nightly news will be <laughs> Delta 8. Doing pretend drugs. <laughs> well, What's it's not it? pretend. It's just a lower, much mm. lower dose of THC. So... You know, it's still going to get you feeling good. I mean, Spice I is so. still around for sure. Tell Pound Cake. It's yeah, still around. It's do. way worse than when it was in gas stations. People will overdose on it now. Overdose? <clears throat> How does that work? Well, I mean, anything you get off the street, you, you know what the hell's in it. If you pull it out of a gas station, you're like, well, I, I have a vague idea of what's in this. Kopi Luwak is the name of the, the coffee, I guess. I don't know. So, um, yeah. Where was that uh, police headquarters, Pound Cake, where the rats were eating all the marijuana? Uh, Chicago. He did. He Now he's just throwing a dart. The he didn't leans. hear me say Chicago one time. The Leans. He's <laughs> down there in New Orleans. Have people sent you, I have to assume everybody sent you the story about the Chick-fil-A owner who got scooped up because he was trying to mm-hmm. perv out on that girl or whatever? No. I didn't <laughs> they didn't send anything. you that? No, no one sent me Oh, anything. man, I figured you. When did this you, happen? Uh, last week? No, I didn't get anything. I don't think people are going to send me a Chick-fil-A defamation. <laughs> a guy who owned a Chick-fil-A, Stacy Lee Austin. 
He's 49 years old. He owned a Chick-fil-A in Belmont, Ohio. Where is Belmont, Ohio? I've heard of it before. I have no idea where it is. There's a university there, if that's in Ohio. Belmont is... Oh, it's part of the Wheeling metropolitan area, so it oh, okay. must be right, right on, on the, border. the border there, yeah. Belmont, Ohio, right near West Virginia. Although I believe it's pronounced Wheeling. <laughs> Wee! He's tiny. Wee! He traveled, uh, they scooped him up. He traveled 400 miles to North Carolina and sexually abused a 15-year-old he met online. Oh, so geez. they didn't get him ahead of time. Oh, wow, so this was not... You say it's always a cop. This person just was not a cop, this young person. Was not a cop. No, you're right. He took a gamble. He's like, all right, sweet, you're not a cop. Let's go. He broke into the family's home in Salisbury, North Carolina, and molested the minor they had met online. Um, he had made contact with the juvenile. I don't. It doesn't say if it was a boy or a girl. I think they're probably Male trying female. to Keeping that, protect uh, the juvenile yeah, in that there you case. Go. Um, the Belmont is 110 miles east of Columbus, Ohio. Oh, there it is. Yeah, so this guy got in a car and drove 400 miles, and then they got a 911 call from... Uh, I would drive 400 miles, miles oh my to molest a child in the Carolinas. <laughs> uh, Never had a follow-up hit. Responded to a 911 call from the teen's father about a burglary. Uh, the caller told deputies he had come home and found Austin inside with his teenage child. They found Austin's underwear in the trash can of a bathroom in their house. Bruh. That's a poop your pants move. Get your sh- no, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> and so he uh, molested the minor in the home. He said that he was concerned about losing his job as the owner of a Chick-fil-A in Ohio. Lose your job. In St. Clairsville, Ohio. Looks brand new, too. The pavement looks new. Yeah. Of course, I guess all Chick-fil-A's look new, right? Because they probably are. No, this, I'm looking there's not at a lot of There's not a lot of 30-year-old Chick-fil-A's. This looks like a box Chick-fil-A. Like, it just came, they just set it down, and then all of a sudden, there's a Chick-fil-A there. Well, that's probably how they all are, right? No. There's probably a plug-and-play with Chick-fil-A. I mean, they, they might be, but this one, it, it's like a different color. It's more... Sleek, if, if that makes is sense. Is chick spelled different? Is this like a, like a knockoff Chick-fil-A? Oh, God. <laughs> uh, no. Yeah, no, this looks... This is this a Chick-fil-A? But it just, <laughs> it just goes to show you, man, you can, be, you can own a franchise. You can own a location of the hottest franchise in fast food, and you're still... You got time on your hands, and you're a Money pet- in your pocket. And you're a pederast. And you're looking for kids online and driving to meet them. And I figured everybody would have sent you that story. No, they didn't. But, again, this is like an illness. Like, at no point, that's that's not a short drive. And you had plenty of time to back out of it and, you know, think about, like, oh, you're not in a, I know you say, you, like, when you're in a froth, you don't think about it. But, like, you're not in a froth for four and a half hours, five hours. Well, I don't think it goes away because on the way there, you're anticipating all the stuff you're going to do. So you're thinking about it the whole time. Well, what's going to happen to his Chick-fil-A? Does he have an heir? An heir. I'll take off Pederas' <laughs> Chick-fil-A. The Chick-fil-A didn't do nothing. Yeah, I don't know about that. But imagine you work at that location and you find out not the guy managing the place, the guy who owns the place, the guy who paid the seven hundred and fifty grand just to get a franchise – and have the thing built and, see, you know. Allen Belmont, Ohio has got one of the biggest, worst prisons. That's right where that dude's going to be going. Oh, well, there you go. Why is it the biggest, worst prison? I don't know. I'm just reading what this person texted. If they've got a, I don't know. Because you can look out your window and say, it's wheeling is right over there. I can see it. Now and I smoke Delta 8 flour, and it legit smells good and tastes good. And gets you feeling good without getting you so stoned that you can't handle yourself. All right. Well, I do like to handle myself when I'm high. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. you know. He be handling himself. Yep. Oh, the K-12. I'm sorry. And uh, Lane Maya. He's on the K-12 on one. He's skiing on one ski. He beat Ray Stalin, didn't he? On one ski. That's crazy. On one ski. I haven't seen that movie in a long time. God, I love Better Off Dead. 
that's one that you need to put on. It's got to be on a streaming service, right? Is it? Um, better. I have it on DVD. I don't know if it's streaming. Where is it? This says Showtime, so that would be Paramount Plus. Ooh, that got folded into Paramount. There you go. Yeah, Better Off Dead. I watch a lot of Paramount Plus lately because that's got <laughs> Cheers. Yep. Keep going. Keep going back to Cheers, and then uh. Mostly just cheers. I watch the TV adaptation of Sexy Beast on Paramount Plus. That's real good. I watch Halo on Paramount Plus. Yeah, they got a lot of good stuff over there. I need to finish Love is Blind. I'm being told the reunion's all messy. Oh, and boy. Crazy. I was a couple watching. episodes behind. I was watching Flora Bama Shore this morning. Oh, man. I watched the first season of that show. Flora Bama Shore. They just ca- but it's just so weird because they just cast people that remind you of Jersey Shore. like, And I just feel like it, this is all contrived because they have to play a character. What? But no, but, but <laughs> before, there was no Mike, the situation. he Give him credit when it's due. He created that No, I, I get it. But these people are just like them. So I'm like, he's. you could tell which one's the Mike and which one is the Ronnie and, you know, mm-hmm. uh, the, the sweet Sammy Sweetheart. I'm like, wow. But so you're still watching it. No, I just happened to turn it on because it, it was like streaming live, and I was like, okay, I never saw this show. So I just. I saw that. a promo for that Jersey Shore family reunion or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's the new on. iteration of it. And I love Jersey Shore back in the day, but I don't care about this new stuff. But I saw the promo, and I was like, oh my God, all of the girls have new faces, so they look super weird. They got all like that these money. are. These are moms now, right? Yeah. Yes. But the dudes look the same. Like, Vinny looks exactly the same as he did 15 years well, he ago. He was the youngest one. So he aged. Whatever. The least. guy's pushing 40. But I'm like, the girls, because that's how it lays out, right? The girls, you know, girls are more prone to probably getting that work done if they're on TV because they want to stay looking the same way or whatever. But it just kind of bummed me out. I was like, oh, my God. That's so sad in a way. Is when they do the reveal, they're like, oh, so and so's back. We're like, what? You like, look at you're like, is it? I legit is couldn't tell one person. I'm like, I've seen Jay Wow with her new face for a while now. So I'm like, okay, that's who that is. But I literally couldn't tell who the other people were. And I'm like, these are all. The-. I said to Gwen, I go, who is that? She's like, this is all of the people from the original show. I'm like, why is Vinny the only one who looks the same? Because everybody else. So again, I, don't, I guess it's a nostalgia trip, whoever's watching it now. But it's like these people are all parents now. Yeah. Like, that's well, way less they're fun. They're set up for their kids to be crazy <laughs> party <laughs> animals. Way less fun. They tried, to make a, they tried to make a big thing about Sammy coming back. And I'm like, bro, it's far too late. Like, no one cares. They tried to do this big reveal. Like, guess what house guest is going to return to the Jersey Shore house? And it was like, Sammy, oh, my God. No one cared. No one tuned in. <laughs> no one's watching MTV like that anymore. And no one's watching Jersey Shore like that anymore. I guess. At least, I mean, Sammy's one who kind of does look the same. But Angelina looks completely different. Snooki and Jay Wow, they, I mean, man, God bless them because they're still on TV. But wow. I got a break here. If you want to get the last word in, send me a text 35192 and we'll be back. It's the Alan Cox Show. Everywhere on our free iHeartRadio app. 